suspect Mark Fitzpatrick wants to come on the field. I would expect to look at the teams over the, uh, uh, the past seasons. There'll be plenty of fireworks, plenty of sparks flying. Obviously got high hopes, full of confidence for him. First full game, doesn't get any bigger than this. He'll be looking forward to this game. And in goal for him is a very imposing figure, Zivi Malkowski, who spent five years as understudy to Jerzy Dudek at Bayernort. And a very tall, commanding figure. Six feet four inches tall. It's Hibbs to start the match. And these opening moments were very important to establish a pattern of play. Conte causing that problem instantly in the air. Such a huge figure up front for Hibbs. There's Michael Yunus outside him, measuring the pass. Clearance was made there by Smith, only as far as Nielsen. Acrobatic attempt by Hartley. Well, Markovsky made that look easy. Must have been taken by surprise. Here's Thompson. Just intercepted by Webster. In comes Nielsen. That's good play by Nielsen. Hartley loves the situation, running at defenders. But he goes athletic enough. He's a chance now for Hartz. He's got to go in this time. Hartz had the lead. It's Rudolf Skatchel who scores. It was found. Lovely ball up the inside there. Initially a good save. That man just get in there. Scatchel get his first derby goal of his career. So a man from the Czech Republic. And the side which won the European Championships in 2002 for the Czechs. He has a very good pedigree. So for plenty of threats in that area for Hibbs. There's one of them, Caldwell. Brisbane couldn't get a hold of that shot. And it's knocked away in the end by young Callum Elliott back helping in defence. Great save, great leap. Just re rebounded back to uh, Buzalem too quickly. Eunice wanting the ball played inside to him. There he goes. And elusive. And that was from Elliott. Good covering play by Caldwell. Another chance almost created by Bednar. That's brilliant. A very good controlled attempt on goal. Angle ball. And it's a good one. And the keeper's in some trouble. Presley almost cashing in there, headed away by Gary Smith from the line. Well, the lay here because Gary Caldwell was the player actually who was struck by his own goalkeeper. Short corner kick. Hartley turning it. A very good ball in. There's a grab side, it came off Whittaker. And once again, Hibbs were exposed by a cross ball. Well, I'll tell you, Tony Mowbray is a slow man to that kind of anger. He's not a happy man at all. Clearly, a number of decisions going against his team. And he's going to be ordered to the stand, Mowbray. He has been ordered to the stand. This is Murphy. Good run forward this time by Thompson. That's promising. There's Conte. He's not in too far. Best move of the match from Hibbs, I would suggest. McAllister plays it long, looking again for Bidna. Hartley following it. That was a hard use by Lars, and the penalty kick has been given. Clear handball by Glass, and why, I really don't know. So it's Hartley against Markovsky. Deadly finish again, Hartley's a two-goal lead. The top of the league is beckoning. You won that man with the ball at his feet on the spot with a penalty with that sort of record. He's deserved that goal. Here's Ryabin. Nowhere to go there. Brilliant standing up against him, not being deceived. And a chance here for 
Bednar in behind Smith. Bednar going all the way himself. The severe pressure there from Smith. He's complaining bitterly that he was pushed by Bednar in the first place. Good turn of pace by Sproul. Excellent turn of pace. Wonderful play by Sproul. It's a cut back now, and the recovery was made by Brellier, but Sproul really electrified the game with that bust. Incredible pace there from the substitute. Thought he'd lost it there. Great piece of work across the defender. Can't tackle you there. McAllister forward for Skatchel. Good movement by Waller here. Received that extremely well. The ball inside is not a bad one either. Ford breaks kindly now. Steven Simmons, the hips catastrophe in defence. Can't see any way back for Hibbs. A little break of the ball there, but how cool was that? A little one two off the two Hibbs defenders, and that is as cool as you'll get. No chance for the keeper. led the table for a very long time, 20 years ago exactly, and lost the last day of the season. The with a shot, it was almost number four. Space here for Michael Yunus. Oh, that's number four. Markovsky completely deceived. It's a gala day for Hearts. Goalkeeper just too far away from that near post, anticipating the cross and just whipped in, whipped in the near post. The goalkeeper should never be beaten from there. Well taken down by McFarlane for Presley, there's Hartley. Now McFarlane again. All too easy now for Hearts, there's no more action though, the final whistle goes. Mark Venus goes to meet George Burley, he'll talk to Tony Mowbray also. Burley satisfactory with Wozzle Hearts, but him some real thinking to do. But the honours in Edinburgh go to Hearts, it's Hearts 4, Hibs nil. It's always nice to, to win uh, the local derby, but um, it's just three points, and you know, I thought we were convincing winners today. Could have been three or four goals up at half time, but you know, we were a bit slack in our finishing, but we showed in the second half how good a team we can be. Also, I've got no complaints. We just, the disappointing thing for me is that, is that we didn't manage to impose our own game on, on them, really. We didn't get our, our passing game going at all. And, um, you know, a bit of that by design and a bit of that by, um, by the way the opposition didn't allow us to. Well, a slightly happier manager here, the Hearts boss, George Burley. Two games, two wins, eight goals. Very good start. Yeah, a good start. Um, you know, when you when you're trying to bring a squad together, you're not you're not quite sure because um, pre-season was very quick. Some of the players were brought in weren't fully fit, but I must admit that everybody responded and the teamwork with um, all the squad has been great. And we'd only sort of three changes from last season really, and mm. everybody played a part. And um, like Paul Hartley's there, you know, a very key figure, and all the Scottish boys were. So um, we didn't expect to start so well, but um, the first two games the, the, the teams played really well. It's what you're saying there, did you expect the team to take longer to gel together? Well, there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, we're not kidding myself. Um, mm. We will get better, I'm sure about that, but um, sometimes things go for you. The key to the, you know, the, the score line was the second goal, you know, because him started the second half very well. We were looked a bit ragged, but once we got the second goal, I think there was only going to be one winners. What did you make of the first goal then? There was a, there was a hint of offside at the time, but I don't think there were too many protests. No, that was a good goal. We, we, we you know, we won the ball, we passed it, we slid it to midfield. Paul Hartley drove it the back four. Nice little through ball, supported with you know with Rudy Satchel, and and got the goal there. So yeah. from our point of view, it was good. And Paul Hartley's second penalty in the week. Yeah, I thought the goalkeeper actually was going to tackle Paul in the penalty spot there. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's two eight two. So it was good. And this one here, it's a defensive error by Hibbs, no doubt about it, but Stephen Simmons takes it well. Yeah, I mean, Stephen's got good ability and he was very calm and placed it in the top corner. And Michael Lunas again, another scorer at Rugby Park, banging, banging one in. Yeah, for that's 2-2 two, two, and both with his left foot, which is not his strongest. Uh, the ball moved a bit there, so um, he can very, be very pleased with his uh, first two games. Your scouting system at Hearts must be amazing, the number of players you're bringing in. 
Well, I mean, I think the club lost um, almost a dozen players last season. Um, and when, when we when we took the, the team on at the beginning of the season, we, we didn't really have a, a recognised you know, striker. So mm. that was important to try to strengthen them. But we brought some quality in. I know that the team will get stronger as the season goes on. There's a lot of work to be done. But I think the key, key is the team spirit. You know, they're all working hard for each other. At times, you know, we didn't play, you know, our best football on Sunday, but what the team did, they worked very hard and every ball they fought for, which was very encouraging. And people did doubt Mr Romanov and whether he had the cash to back up his ideas, but you have brought in some very smart players. Jankowski's former Porto player, reputedly his business on £10,000 a week. You're certainly splashing the cash. Well, Mr Romanov said he wants to, um, you know, progress the club and we're bringing good players in, but um, these, are, these are all players. I mean, Jan Kulstad was in a free transfer. Sure. And certainly Hearts are not paying that type of money on wages. And, and um, Rudy Satchel scored there. He's on a loan from uh, Marseille. Mm. So I think we've got some good bargains. And then we've got um, Roman Bed uh, Bednar, who's only 22, and he's, you know, he's, going, he's going to be a terrific striker. And, and the rest of the players have improved. And Miko there, terrific. And uh, the first couple of weeks at the club, I had a little bit of a go up for not working hard enough. <laughs> And he, sh he showed me in the last few games that he can do. And Hearts have always had a reputation for bringing young players through. Are you going to have to farm a few of them out? Well, that's something we've got to look at, uh, the progression. I said that uh, we've got to set standards. And uh, but, but, you know, with um, young you know, Callum Ellip started on, on, on sure. Sunday with young Lee Wallace. Uh, both of them are 18-year-old, come on and, and played a part. So it's something we've got to look at very carefully uh, throughout the season. And you've certainly raised expectations amongst the heart support. Is that just extra pressure for you? No, I mean, it's great when you, you, you've got that type of interest. I mean, my first game pre-season with 15,000 you know, against Middlesbrough. Uh, we took 3,500 to, to Rugby Park last Saturday. We sold out the game on Sunday in a day, sold over 10,000 season tickets. So there is um, you know, a great belief, and that's enjoyable. Of course, expectations are high. But um, I've said from day one, if we manage to you know, qualify from Europe this season, it'll be great. Bill Lecky, are they on the right road? Oh, absolutely. I, I don't have any doubt that um, if Hearts play the way they've played the first two weeks, they, can, they really can be part of a three-horse race for the first time in a lot of years. I think they can be cre they, we can have a credible challenger to the old firm. Uh, I, I thought yesterday they were absolutely tremendous. I mean, Hibs were great last season, but player for player right across the park, Hearts out did them. Um, scored good goals, played some decent football, but I was really impressed with the fact that a lot of the foreign players up coming to Scotland, you maybe don't get the graft out of them, but those boys yesterday, Bednar and, and Scatchel and Brelli, really wanted to work. And uh, they lifted guys like Hartley round about them. I, I think Hearts have got a really good chance this season. crowd at Tanaday, swollen by around 5,000 Hearts fans, testament to the pulling power of the Edinburgh club when doing well. Hearts in the mouths for the visiting support as Barry Robson tested Craig Gordon. The young keeper showing strong hands to push the ball out of harm's way. If Hearts were looking to underline their credentials, they wasted little time in delivering another reminder that they are up for the challenge this season. Stephen Presley heading them on their way back to the top of the table after just six minutes. George Burley's men went into the game knowing that only goal difference could keep them off the top spot if they were to win. The message delivered loud and clear. It is still ridiculously early, of course, but there hangs about hearts a belief that this is a season when they can really, truly rock the old firm boat. And that belief was translated into hard evidence by Roman Bednar. Twelve minutes gone and a spectacular start for the Gorgie side. Question marks on the defending. The answer's coming from rampant hearts. The hit and hope came good thanks to excellent control and an eye for goal from Bednar. There have been plenty of false dawns for hearts in the past, of course. This might prove to be another. But the supporters are lapping it up. The movement and awareness was too much for United in the early stages. They don't face the Glasgow clubs for several weeks, but Hearts would fancy their chances right now against the big two who are still trying to set out their stalls for this season. Only Stilly prevented a third goal. United fought back and you feel they must have a better season than last time, especially with Lee Miller always ready to take the half chance. There's no doubt he'll prove his worth in the coming months. And if Jim McIntyre had been a fraction more accurate with his header, United might have had a lifeline back into the game. 
frustration for the United man, Gordon, was rooted to the spot. Yes, hearts were good, but United showed enough to suggest they weren't out of contention, and Gordon came to the rescue for the visitors. The flying save from Robson's header was an important one, with a feeling growing that if United could get one back, they could take something from the game. The football was pretty, it was almost pretty effective too, an offside flag stifling the celebrations. A close enough call, but Miller marginally ahead of the defender. Injury has forced Paul Hartley out of the Scotland squad for the game with Austria, which is bad news for Walter Smith, but he's capable of this kind of skill, and he'll feel he should have scored there. Hearts finished strongly. The run of substitute Lee Wallace was good enough to earn the reward. Stilly had other ideas. Wallace just one of several Scots mixed up with the Europeans in this side. George Burley wants to strengthen further, and that's bad news for the rest in the SPL if his next signing or two prove as adept as those he has already brought to the club. Rudy Scatchel rammed home the message that Hart's intentions are intact. And with this following, and in this kind of form, they will take some beating. Hearts fans have plenty to celebrate these days, a new owner with new ambitions to match, but just how good are they? Against United, they were excellent. It was their movement that caused United problems all day. Here, Bednar goes wide to allow Michelinus to space in behind, and eventually they win a corner. This time, Bednar and Michelinus team up again. Bednar stays long, allowing Michelinus the opportunity to play a 1-2 with Nielsen. Cross, not the best, but Hearts dangerous in attack. Latest signing, Takas Fisas breaks forward on the left. Rudy Scatchel gets himself wide. Bednar comes short. And eventually they create another crossing opportunity. <laughs> Bednar and Michelinus work in tandem again here. Nielsen on the ball. Michelinus goes short. Bednar stays long. And he uses his strength to receive Nielsen's pass. And once again, they win a corner. Much has been made of Hart's foreign contingent, but I wouldn't underestimate the influence of Captain Stephen Presley or Paul Hartley. Quite simply, Presley here keeps the ball away from the danger area. And Edgar Jankowskis is left in no uncertain terms that his captain wants a bit more from him. This was one of United's best chances to break away and get themselves back into the game, but Presley's defending is exceptional. What an example this is of Paul Hartley's tremendous energy levels and desire to get into the box. Lee Wallace is 15 yards in front of Hartley when he picks the ball up, but as he drives forward, look who's the first to be looking for a rebound. No wonder George Burley gave him a new three-year deal. One controversial moment that referee Charlie Richmond clearly missed was this clash between Michelinus and Robson in the first half. Robson, desperate to get into the box, uses plenty of force to get free of his marker. But you needn't worry, the SFA tend only to clamp down on incidents like this when it involves a player from the old firm. Lucky boy. Fascinating as well, I'll tell you. Uh, Fraser, we've had quite a lot of laddies emailing us to say they're <laughs> on hearts at 400 to 1 for the title. Can I tell you, Ladbrokes and Hills today cut them to 12 and 14 to 1. It's dramatic. It's incredible. I mean, it's very early in the season, Jim, I have to say. I mean, the, the results have, have been terrific. And uh, it's great to see a core of Scots in, the, in their team as well. And I hope they don't forget about that because the foreign players are bringing in, yes, they have got talent as well, but uh, I hope that the younger lads at Hearts don't get, get forgotten. But uh, any club that challenges the old firm is good for, for Scottish football. Aberdeen we saw yesterday as well, Hibs for all of last season, and Hearts as well, and long may it continue. And Andy, the gentleman there might get his wish because George Burley said after the match on Saturday he'll have two new players in before the transfer window closes. Yeah, I spoke to him last week. I think he's very keen in getting someone in to compete with Robbie Nielsen in that right-back area. And if he can get someone with a bit of quality there, then he's got a really solid-looking back four and possibly, I think, uh, another midfield player. And that would give him the strength and depth that he'd probably need once he picks up a couple of injuries and percent record hearts find themselves the target team for everybody in the league but with great confidence select 
the same team as won last week. Now, there might be a large foreign element in that side, but for me, the outstanding player so far has been the homebred Scott, Paul Hartley. Russell Anderson has never led out an Aberdeen team that has gone on to win here in the last six seasons. But with only one change in the side which beat Rangers Considine for Muirhead, the Aberdeen captain remains the club's top goal scorer. Signs of the times, an absolutely full house here for an Aberdeen Hearts game. Well, it shows you what's happening. And you know, the transformation in the atmosphere around the Gorgie Road is nothing short of remarkable compared to the last time I was here. It's as if the whole environment has had one huge major heart transplant. Severin again gets good support. Well, that's a beautiful little ball inside to Dempsey, and he couldn't get hold of it properly. Good play by Aberdeen. At the moment, they've been snuffing out the, the, the big men up front, but that falls well. Dead now picks it up. Uh, Scatchel, rather. And there's a snapshot by... The big fella, Edgar Jankoskas. Fisas again. Now Webster. Ball played well inside. Jankoskas almost gets it through. This must be a chance. It's a goal. Scatchel comes in again. Good combination work there by Hartz. At first, it looked as if they might lose out on that. But Scaccio kept his balance. The equilibrium absolutely perfect to slot that away. Bellier. Uncertainty, Scaccio tries to go for it again. That'll be a corner kick. Well, Scaccio, Rudy Scaccio is always there and thereabouts. In the end swing up he just touched on and there's a miss Stephen Presley played down there there's a great chance for Aberdeen as that was hooked away Gary Dempsey coming in on that Kalkas. Well, he meant it for his partner, Bednar, again. And there, Hartley coming through on it. That's Smith again. Is he going for it? Free kick, yeah, brought down. Nicholson has trotted back, leaving this to Dempsey. It's a decent one. Very good ball indeed. Schatchel, again very cool in midfield. Schatchel trying to go after it. Clark is there. Schatchel brushes him aside again. Just beyond Jankowskis. Aberdeen finding it very difficult to pin down the likes of uh, Scatchel and Hartley. Great play by Scatchel again. Well, there's a great show, it's up the post. Jamie McAllister finished there by Jankokas. Tremendous play by Hart. That's where this defence has looked very ragged at the moment. Oh, what a brilliant goal! Past Michel. Virtually out of nothing. Again, it's a ball that should have been cleared, but if you give a skilled player like that an opportunity, then he'll kill you off, and that's exactly what he did. He's 
nicely mopped up by the Hearts defence. That almost paid off. It's onside. Hartley going in. There's two men there. He's going to try it himself. He should have let it off. Jankoskis. Incandescent with rage there. No strength in that shot. Pieces coming through on it. And the final whistle goes. There we are. Well, the two valuable summer signings by George Bully have paid off. That opening goal by Rudy Scaccio. And then a bolt out of the blue, as it were, by Pospiso. And so Hart deserving of the victory. Final score, Hart 2, Aberdeen 0. Well, Archie's here in the studio. Archie, I think it's fair to say we're becoming increasingly impressed by Hearts. <laughs> well, up till now, it was the truth universally acknowledged, as somebody once said, that Hearts could only finish third, they could only prop up the old firm, and now look what's happening. A fellow broadcaster of uh, more tender years asked me after the game, uh, having seen some of the Hearts teams in the past, how I compared this team to them. And the one that came to him in was steel. They're hard from back, through the middle, right up front. Now, if you've got two big men, six feet three and six feet four, why not play long balls to them? It's a perfectly legitimate tactic. Not to do so would be like a man with a super deluxe car not using his fifth gear. I mean, it's economical to do that. Now, what is happening is the two big men are getting the best out of Paul Hartley mm -hmm. and Scatchell. I mean, they're the scavengers at the back there picking up when they break up the defences and they're the scoring goals and playing attractively. Now, the last time, uh, last year, Jim, when we were complimenting, rightly, Hibs for the most attractive football we've seen in years, at the same time, at the back of it, you never felt there were really winners that were going on to win something. This Hearts team is built for the marathon. They're going to hang in and stay there. Yeah, they play long balls occasionally, but okay, they, they, have some, they have some yes. flair players in their team and none more so than Rudy Scatchell, who the fans have really taken to. Yeah, uh, and I think uh, what it, he's a thinking player. Um, he's a player that always runs into the right position at the right time, apparently. And look at the poise there. He's a midfield player with a touch. You saw Lovenkrantz finishing or attempts at finishing for Rangers. He had that little poise that wasn't there with the Rangers player. And he's always up there. As I said, he feeds off the big men inside the penalty area and uh, is always up there for a, a chance. But beside him, Paul Hartley is absolutely superb in my view. But I, I think one of the reasons, Jim, that Hartley is playing so well, if you don't mind me mentioning Hartley at the moment, the home red Scott, is because he's playing with better players. Mm. He's certainly playing with better players and they're certainly coming along. But, Archie, do we believe Hearts are in here for the long haul? Well, remember the last time they had a long run, when they lost the league in the last day of the season. Remember doing the commentary up at Dens when they lost to, to yeah. Dundee up there. Every week from, I think, about February onwards, people say they'll collapse or they're going down. And this was annoying the, the Hearts people. And I think it'll annoy them even now because you say they'll collapse. I think they're in for a long run. I'm certainly not saying they're going no, no. saying, let's go to <laughs> Interesting, Andy, um, for all that we praised Aberdeen last week, they're way behind Hearts in the league. Yeah, they are, and they're still searching for that consistency. And they don't have the talent that uh, Hearts have got. And uh, I would only echo what uh, Archie's saying, because when you look at the players that Hearts have, I think it's encouraging for them that Jan Kouskis hasn't even scored yet. He's a big guy who's leading the line well. He hasn't chipped in with any goals. And that's definitely something that Aberdeen need to get, week in, week out, a spread of goal scorers that Hearts have got. Yeah, Steve Lovell will score goals, Jerry, and Darren Mackey when he comes back. They, they had a chance to sign Chris Boyd, couldn't afford him. We hear tonight the Kilmarnock striker is off to Cardiff City, but they do need another striker in Aberdeen. Absolutely, but you know, I would say let's, uh, let's enjoy the moment and be positive about Hearts. I uh, watched extensive highlights of them over the, the, the weekend, and I was impressed by the number of chances they made. And I, I like the balance of Scots and foreigners. And the foreigners that have come in, apart from that steel we've all been talking about, they've got good technique, they've got an excellent manager. There's no doubt about that. And uh, 
I think there'll be a big danger in the cup competitions, and I hope they can keep going. I'm a Harps fan this season. <laughs> Archie, you Jerry, mentioned. Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> Don't let it go Archie, to your head. Archie, you mentioned the steel in this team, and none more so than in this back four. They are so tight, aren't they? Well, the Scottish international defenders, they've been playing for years together. Uh, remember the little rumour about um, uh, Webster maybe going to Rangers, wouldn't go to Dublin, so George has said, well, OK, don't go to Dublin then, we'll go without you. And I think you got a, a little uh, fright there. Uh, yes, they're solid. Um, the very fact that uh, there is a mix that Jerry was talking about is good because I'm not against foreign element. It's just the, the proportion of them and being able to give young players uh, their edge. Aberdeen, by the way, uh, played some very good football, over-elaborate at times in my view, uh, like that one there, uh, Dempsey just tackled a wonderful tackle by Webster. Um, and yes, I, I think Aberdeen are going to go up the league. Once Mackey comes back and they get Hart back, I think they'll, they'll improve. Andy, you upset Hibs last year. Are you going to upset Hearts? Can they go all the way? I don't think they can go all the way, but I welcome the fact that they're such a, a strong squad. I hope they can keep it going for as long as... For the first time in years, the form of Hearts has been enough to take the spotlight off the Edinburgh Festival. Instead of being the fringe event, the Gorgie side are the main attraction this summer. And in the great theatre tradition, it's been enough to put bums on seats, some 15,500, making up the largest Hearts support at Tynecastle for a decade. They're obviously liking what they see, the early scenes earning a round of applause. Motherwell have been known to make a crisis out of a drama this season, of course. It certainly wouldn't have been in the script had Scott MacDonald beaten Craig Gordon. <laughs> Australian not the first to find out just how good the Hearts keeper's form is. He's expected to be in place for the international double header coming up. And from being solid at the back, Hearts have given themselves a platform to allow their expressive players to, well, express themselves. Rudy Scatchel, this time, unable to finish off. Credit goes to Graham Smith, who wants to impress Terry Butcher while Gordon Marshall is injured. Hearts carry in their ranks several key players for Scotland, which would suggest their success might not be the flash in the pan some might think. They also have the likes of Edgar Jankowskis capable of firing off from distance. This might not have been their best performance of the season, but there was still danger from every direction coming from Hearts, whose fans will have to accept that sometimes a victory, however hard fought, is acceptable enough. Three points is all that matters sometimes. Other times, when you see flowing moves such as this one, the whole afternoon takes off to a different plane. It looked all so easy as Hearts carved their way through the Motherwell midfield in defence. Scatchel pointing the way. Smith was exposed, fifth goal of the season for Scatchel, who has found the net in every league game so far. Terry Butcher was less than impressed with his team's defending when they lost to Dundee United last week, and he could have done without them giving possession away. Jan Kouskis kept out by Smith's bravery. George Burley still insists he's a couple of players away from having a squad that can really challenge. Some of the other sides in the SPL are probably hoping he's not able to strengthen before the window. Hearts still, though, have the potential to score goals, and they can do so in style. No denying Jan Kouskis this time, daylight between the sides, and three points beckoning for the league leaders. Motherwell, to be fair, refused to lie down and given the way their season has gone, this one could still have finished 5-5. Their lifeline back into the game came when Jim Hamilton was upended in the area. Craig Thompson quite clearly indicating what the penalty was awarded for. A bit of jersey tugging from both players probably, but hearts were penalised and it was Richie Foran against Craig Gordon. rifled in by Foran, although a little bit too close to the keeper than he might have liked but Hearts conceding their first goal in five games. And suddenly they were fragile and generous and then fortunate as Hamilton threatened to burst that bubble that's growing ever larger above Tynecastle. Gordon should have been left a spectator as Hamilton picked up on the loose ball. Luck is always a welcome 12th man when it goes your way. 
Motherwell will look back and feel they might have taken something from the game. Hearts will feel they could have won with more to spare. The missed chance was one that almost came back to haunt them. In the dying seconds, Gordon produced a save that helped win the game. He also gave us hope for the Italy match next week. Five games in, it's 10 out of 10 for Hearts. Close your eyes and make a wish. It's time to believe. Five five. Um, today we didn't play our best. Uh, we need to strengthen the squad, and if we can do that, who knows where it can take us. But um, you know, we've got to just take one step at a time. When you play Hearts, yeah, they have all these people going forward and, and big height and big strength. But you've got Presley and Webster, and Scotland's number one behind them. It's still a formidable barrier. Andy, in successive weeks, the lead has gone from two points to three points to five points. They're pulling away. Yeah, well, the great debate in Edinburgh just now as to who actually identifies these potential new signings that George Burley is talking about, because for weeks now he's been saying he'd like to get a couple of players in. The deadline is on Wednesday, and uh, I just wonder whether that relationship is as solid as they say. But whatever has happened, George Burley's made a, a marvellous impact. And what a difference it makes when you have someone like Scatchel uh, who can score so often, so regularly from midfield. And what a difference it makes to have Scotland's number one goalkeeper there to save you at the end of the match. What a save, Jim. I mean, uh, astonishing reactions, because I don't think David Clarkson could have caught that volley any sweeter. But uh, Hart's got off to a terrific start, and I love the, the timing of this pass here from Hartley. And uh, Scatchel, as he's done in every league game so far, finishing superbly, and he's taken so much of the weight of uh, the likes of Bednar, who came very highly acclaimed. But this was a great finish, wasn't it, from Jankowskis? Yeah, it was. He's taken a bit of uh, time to get uh, his shooting boots on, but he got a couple against uh, Queen's Park in the League Cup, and uh, he looks to be the man in form. But this save again, Jim, it's, it's astonishing reactions, and obviously... Great for Hearts, but it bodes well for Scotland too. It certainly does. Uh, Mark Lees and Craig McIntosh have both written in uh, praising George Burley. Uh, Graham, you met George the other day for your newspaper, The Herald, and uh, how did you find him? I found him very interesting and quite an impressive guy. Um, his track record in football is, I think, beyond dispute. Even before he took, took Ipswich into the Premiership, never mind finishing fifth, in the previous two or three seasons they'd been there or thereabouts. He did very well at Derby. He did a salvage job at Derby. And he's got off to flying start here. And one of the things that's characterised Burley's work, wherever he's gone, is he has signed continental players from continental Europe very well. At Derby, he signed a couple of players that, that transformed their team. He's done it here with Scatchel. Jankowskis has got a very good touch for a, for a big player, as we saw. And I think Burley's an impressive football coach. I think his track record bears... Livingston last recorded a win against Hearts in January 2002 and the home side with three changes to their starting lineup. The first SPL start of the season for Scott Boyd and debuts for Neil and Graham Barrett. McAllister for Michaelunis, the only change for the league leaders undefeated in the last four trips to Amonvale. Referee Dougie MacDonald, commentary Jock Brown with Mark Hately. Barrett and Dalglish get us on the way for the start of the match. And for both sides, a match of immense importance. Livingston determined to get back into business here. After such a slow start of the season, the Hearts want to maintain the momentum. Mr. Yeah. just holding it up there for Scatchel. Goes wide here for Bednar. A good ball in, that's Hartley, must be a goal, and it's Rudy Scatchel again. Excellent play there from Hearts, excellent build-up, didn't rush it. Nice and patient, and picked out two or three little chip balls back. Presley well forward. Jankowskis, saved by McKenzie, 
Super oh, save. Finally, Jan Kuzin in our far post, beyond the far post, they almost squeezed it home. Bellier. That's a very good pass for Bednar. Well, he's late, but I know as simple as that. He's going to be yellow carded, which I suppose is somewhat inevitable these days, although he would, I thought, genuinely tried to win the ball. Kalistik could deliver the in swinger, Hart for the out swinger. It's a very good ball, and simply not at home by Andy Webster. Dreadful defending. As simple as it comes up for Andy Webster, you see, you see when it comes into the replay, he just gets himself on his marker. Super delivery, and there you go, look, just peels off to the far post, as simple as you like. Bread and butter stuffed up for the centre half. It's the break of the ball, that's Barrett to the long, half long cross, Dare did well. That's Mackay. Very good save by Gordon. Had to be unsighted there. That was brilliant. Now the counter attack is on. Jankowskis. Very well timed run by Bednar. Hartley waits in the centre. This must be the third. Devastating play from Hart on the counter attack. Absolutely super play there. Rewarded. Non-stop, perpetual motion, that man, in defence, up front, fantastic goal. What a warning to a couple of players there, inside the box, Presley and Barrett from the referee. That's oh, a terrific effort by Barrett. Gordon was struggling, he didn't get a touch, that was straight over the top of the bar. Super, super technique there from Barrett. It's oh, got fingertips to that. No oh dear. Barrett wants it back. That's nimble play. Very nimble play indeed. Brought down by Brellier. Yellow card for the Hearts man. Similar situation. I suspect. Similar situation. Great play from Barrett again. Barrett checks his angles. That's terrific goalkeeping too, but it's turned in. It broke off Gordon. Livingston has scored. Paul Dalglish has knocked in the rebound. Another super free kick there from Barrett. Good response from Livingston. A better play from Livingston, being more direct. Well, that's a great header by Barrett. Found space in the box. Webster got to him late. Probably prowling around that technical area in a second. I don't think he's entirely happy with this performance after such an impressive start. And it's a penalty kick to Hearts. Neil Barrett shot pulling on Jamie McAllister. Three out of three, four one to Hearts. And surely now they've really overcome any resistance from Livingston. Careless one by McAllister, there's Britain again. On another wonderful save by Craig Gordon. Careless one. But it's the last pass of the match, which Hearts won comprehensively. Scored three goals and could have been six or seven. But then, you know, give Livingston credit, they come back into it and me maybe took a foot off the pedal. And in the second half, we had a number of tired legs out there with 11 players away international duty, and I thought it showed. But, um, you know, you can't ask any more of the players. You know, 6 36, scoring four goals away from home today. Um, tremendous. I'm here with Hearts fan Rosemary. Rosemary, um, a brace for Hartley there, but he has said the expectation levels might be a bit high, and he heard the crowd getting a bit disgruntled at 3 1. You were there. How did you feel as a Hearts supporter? I don't think it was disgruntled. I just think it was a bit quieter than it had been the rest of the game. But the point is that expectation is much greater now because the 100% record is there to get broken. So the longer we go, the more nervous I think the fans are getting. And do you feel that it's a bubble that is going to burst? I mean, no. ho hopefully not for Hart's point of view. No, I don't think so. Nothing 
there's nothing to show that it's going to burst, so keep going. That's all we can do. And you're, you're confident it will keep going yes. even through the dark winter months? Yes, definitely. Rosemary's confident, as are the rest of the Hearts squad in here tonight. Indeed, and Jerry, according to Mr Romanov, I buy the players, George Burley trains them, and it seems to work. It's certainly working so far, and by God, he can spot uh, players like Skechel, etc., <laughs> etc. Et but Berlusconi did that. He brought in uh, our first countryman, uh, Hulit van Basten Rijkaard. And uh, Fabio Capella didn't complain. He got on with it and, 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 and won some big trophies. It's the story of the season. It's been absolutely remarkable, and uh, long may it last. Andy, one guy he didn't have to bring in was Craig Gordon. Again, some magnificent saves from him yesterday. Yeah, well, I think he's a huge part of the team. I think when you have to be in contention for the league title... You need a goalkeeper who can win you points. I'm thinking more, this save was, was excellent. But the save he had from Clarkson last week at Tynecastle against Motherwell was exceptional. They've got a strong partnership just in front of them with Presley and Webster. Hartley and Scatchels can score goals from midfield. And they've got a couple of strikers who are chipping in with goals as well. So that spine right through the team is very strong. Arthur, they've brought in some magnificent mm. players and Rudy Scatchel is the darling of the crowds at Tynecastle. He's, he's been great so far. Six goals, six games. Yeah, you can see that as well. He's uh, full of confidence. Uh, great player together with Hartley. I think uh, two players that form the engine on, on midfield. And, and what you can see as well, uh, they can defend. They're very strong ones when they have the ball. And what I like as well from Hartley and Scatchel, they support as well the strikers. As, as when the ball comes in the box, they are there. They try to be there in the box to score the goal. But Hearts are the team to beat. And I think it's refreshing for the league because normally it's Rangers and Celtic. But Hearts at the moment, they're doing a very good job and it will be very difficult to beat them. Andy, I keep hearing people saying, oh, once the dark winter nights come in, they're going to struggle. Surely they have dark winter days in Czechoslovakia yeah. and Lithuania as well? Yeah, I think it's a valid point. <laughs> I think when they start to change the team around, for whatever reason, whether it's injury or suspension or players out of form, if they lose one or two of their, their bigger players, it will be interesting to see how they adapt. And, of course, they've got Rangers in a couple of weeks. I mean, I would imagine they would go into that as they are now, eight points in front of Rangers with a chance to go 11 in front. Quite astonishing. Did you hear yeah. that uh, Twimindus at the end of Burley? <laughs> very Fergie-like. Very Fergie. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Fireworks ahead of the match. And no surprises with a 4-4-2 lineup for Hearts manager George Burley. Samuel Camazola retained his place in the team with Jankowskis and Bednar, the front two, and seven goal Rudy Skatchel in there as well. Alex McLeish brought Marvin Andrews in and started with a back three. Nacho Novo employed to get behind the Hearts defence with Buffel and Jeffers left on the bench. Referee Kenny Clark, commentary Jock Brown and Mark Hatley. Well, great interest in how Rangers will start the match and line up. There's going to be Jankowskis and Hartley to start the match and we're underway in perhaps a league match of the season so far, without question, I think. Hearts, of course, populated by a lot of players who are totally unimpressed by historical old firm dominance. Men like Pisas. Cut noise with him. That's Purcell with a cross, it reaches Bernard, that was very difficult indeed for Bernard. Involuntary dummy there, I think, by Bernard, and Skatchel. Right here, out there to Murray, looks and beat the ball, that's Skatchel's cross! An excellent save by Vakarus, he needed help though, from Rodriguez and Jankowskis. Fantastic ball in from Skatchel, and Erickson caught with the ball, but that's a great ball, that's a great header and a great save, good football all round. Very good attempt on goal that by Jankowskis. Everybody from Scratcher looks at it also. Here's Hartley now with a corner kick. That's a goal for Hearts! Roman Bednar gets the opening goal! Terrific delivery by Hartley and a deadly finish by Bednar. Absolutely a deadly, deadly service there from Hartley. How many times have we seen that this year? Rangers conceding from corners and free kicks. Man not in front of the space. And that is a super finish, all made by the delivery. Plenty of pace, nobody in front of Bednar. And that is a simple finish. Super, super goal for Hearts. Sean made by Andrews and was almost collected by Scatchel. This is Hartley. Scatchel again. It's a 
Very intelligent turn on and good delivery again. And a great chance for Bednar. It was about six inches too high for Bednar. Ferguson picks out Mamucci. Good block by Pisas. Can't play the defence. Uh, completely confident team. Excellent pass there by Jankowskis. And Andrews out of reach as he brings down Bednar. Clear free kick there to Hart. Jankowskis to Bednar, helping it on. He's reached in the schedule. What an effort that was by Skatchel. Yeah, and decisive defending again there, look. Ball just dropping down. And that's the last man you want on the ball. Skatchel has had an excellent start to this game. His delivery's been good. That's Purcell with a header. And Gordon did well despite the attentions there of Kiriakos. It's Camazola. Touching the ball still, Camazola. Tackle eventually by Rodriguez. Appeals for a penalty. Mamucci with a clearing header only reaches Pisas. A push by Rodriguez that time. Now that was a, a clear push on Simmons and Rangers have escaped. Kenny Clark right in front of that as well. Yeah, hands on there. A clear push from Rodriguez. You see it from behind. He's the first one. He's a it's a tackle for me, there's nothing in that one. Julian Rodriguez is going off, well, he's going off in a manner which suggests he's not in any way unfit. So it looks like a tactical change being made here by Rangers. Days, I would suggest for Barry Ferguson so far, and here's Andrews a chance to play this in. It's a good ball in, and very alert, sharp goalkeeping by Gordon. It's Paul Hartley now. It's a very good ball across, and then Kauskas is a threat there, all right, in between Rickson and Andrews. And that's a fantastic delivery from Paul Hartley here. And this is a chance. Brixton just, just nudging in Kaskis underneath the ball there, but that is a great opportunity. Had to check back. There's nowhere to go that direction. He's done well to get support from Rickson. That's what Buffel. He's done well. Promising for Rangers. Presley did well too. Presley was way to the top of Greg Gordon. He reacted well. Better play from Rangers. I have to say, well, there's no way in which you could grudge Hearts a victory on the performance so far. I think the, the, the chances have come along. I think about the better chances. There's not been a lot of chances throughout from either, either side, but I think Hearts have created the better chances. I'll be worried about the lack of efforts on goal again today. So uh, I think it's not been a, a game for the Theorist. Oh, Nieto's gone in behind Presley. He's no support at all. He's on his own. Buster trying to get there. Oh, good play by Nieto. That's the chance for Jackers. The block was made by Nielsen. Was it handball? No, says the referee. Well, Nieto complaining mentally. The entire stand behind Craig Gordon wanted a penalty. Nieto, fantastic work there. And that is a clear handball, whether it's intentional or not, it's handball, and the ball is going goal-bound. Back it comes to Nielsen. It's all scrappy and untidy as Skatchel tries to get the better of Andrews. Was he pushed by Andrews? No, says the referee, but it is a throw to Rangers. And Rickson goes in. To get the ball back and snatch it goes down. The referee, quite sensible in my view, lets things alone. And the final whistle goes. It's eight straight victories for the Hearts at the start of the season. A remarkable record. And there's jubilation all around Tyne Castle. Me and Murray and Stephen Presley are not too happy at all with each other. I don't know what that's about. But they're very upset and angry. Julian Brelli had an outstanding match for Hearts. And he's 
supporters have seldom known things so good as 1960 when they last won the league championship. But that is right on the cards now. They proved it against one of the old firm. That was all of the challenge they had. They've done it, and they've done it convincingly. There can be no argument they're worth the victory. We've started well, but we also know that we're not the quarter way gone. But um, you, you can't knock the players with their attitude and commitment. And, and, and to win eight games in the trot in any league, it's a magnificent achievement. Hearts didn't give you any freedom at all, did they? No, um, we, we, to be fair, we, we said that we didn't want to give them, them any freedom. But they were up for it, and as they would be, they, they played, played it well. And I think they... The disappointing thing is they won more of the individual battles than we did. Just the last 20 minutes, and correct me if I'm wrong, but were your players happy to settle for 1-0? Oh, definitely. <laughs> we were, because um, Rangers put us under pressure, and we were, you know, disjointed a little bit with, with you know, having to change the personnel. So, you know, 1-0 gives you three points, and um, certainly we were pleased with that. Andy Walker and Arthur Newman here, Bill Lecky as well. Bill, never mind one side of Glasgow waking up to this Hearts challenge. I just detected the whole of Britain is suddenly waking up to this Hearts challenge. Yeah, I think uh, you know radio stations from down south have been doing stuff and TV and people are starting to realise it's good fun when there's more than two teams involved. Down south, it, you know, one team's running away with it again. Hearts have been, and I've been talking about a breath of fresh air, once a season you get somebody, Hearts are a genuine breath of fresh air, it's been terrific. And Arthur, Rangers now know all about them. Yeah, of course. They're not only down south, even in Holland they are talking about it. A lot of questions, but uh, it's always difficult when you go to Tynecastle, and especially now because Hearts, they are the team with confidence. The players, they know what they can do. Uh, there's a lot of competition that keeps each other sharp as well. And Rangers at the moment, they're struggling. Uh, the last couple of weeks, bad results. Uh, the manager is changing the system as well, and that doesn't help the players. But the reason why he's also changing the system is that the players are not performing. Uh, they are struggling with the form. There may be two or three players who are playing well, like the goalkeeper, uh, Brousseau, uh, Betty Ferguson, yeah. and all the other players, they are really struggling, and you can see that back on the pitch. Andy, there's not too many Hearts players struggling. No, they're not, and uh, consistency and team selection, I think, is a big help to them. Everyone on top of their game, and the worrying thing for Rangers, of course, is that that was a big game. They had to get something out of that. And as Arthur says, only two or three players seem to be up for the challenge. And the Hearts goal, Andy, it's a great goal from a Hearts point of view, but Rangers will be looking at Marvin Andrews' positioning. Yeah, well, they've definitely got a problem whenever corners are coming in, crosses from any part of the field, but the delivery is fantastic. And as a striker, all you need is half a yard. I mean, you don't need to be the biggest, but uh, yeah, Andrews should be doing better, and if you're not going to out-jump them, You've got to make sure that your opponent's not getting in front of you. Yeah, it was, of course, a blow to Hearts when Bednar went off. We'll know more about his injury tomorrow. Uh, Arthur, Alec McLeish decided to change things. Mm -hmm. He started with a back three, went to back four. Rodriguez mm -hmm. being taken off. Yeah, I was surprised as well because I thought after the last two games he will stick with, uh, with the back four, uh, four midfielders and two up front. But he changed the before the game with, with three defenders, but after 20 minutes he changed it again and probably not happy with the way they were playing, and especially when they played against the two strikers, they were all over the place. So he had to do something, and uh, he changed it again. But uh, what I say, Hearts, they played really well, uh, what they said as well. The players finally play with confidence. Uh, Skatehill is all over the place. Uh, Hartley, uh, the two up front as well, and they gave, especially the, the first 20 minutes, the three Rangers defenders, a very uh, difficult time. And Bill Jankowskis gives them something as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. I think that's why Rangers went to three, because you've got the two big yeah. strikers, Bednar and Jankowskis, mm. but... If you, if you have got three defenders, then two of them have got to pick these two guys up and, and try and mark them out of the game. But Jankowskis and Bednar did tremendously well. Andy, three penalty claims in the game. We can see them very quickly here. First of all, the Hearts win. Rodriguez on Simmons. It looked a clear penalty to me. I think when you look at it and you see the, the referee's positioning, I think he may well have been unsighted by... I'm sure it was Barry Ferguson who was in front there. That is obviously not a penalty. But as the play rages on, I think when the ball comes in here, you can see Kenny Clark. Maybe just slightly unsighted, because had he seen it from any other angle, surely the two hands on his back was, was a clear penalty. Yeah, and Arthur, penalty uh, coming up, that was the, the handball claim there at the end. What did yeah. you make of that one? Yeah, well, if you can see it, it is a clear and open chance uh, for, for Rangers to score the equaliser. And although uh, I think it was Presley, they didn't get the ball delivery on his hand mm. or on his arm. But in this situation, if he doesn't, doesn't touch the ball, then the ball would probably go into the net and that can change the, the game. For serious title challengers, I just don't think they'll do it. And uh, I think in the fullness of time, uh, they'll be overtaken. Uh, I'm not convinced that that relationship between the manager and the owner is going to serve them well in the, in the long run.
because I think when you've got the owner bringing in players, eventually that's going to be a problem for, for George Burley. Bill, I am a believer, are you? Very much so, I have been. I think the last time I was on was after they'd beaten Hibs 4-0 and George Burley was on. I said then I thought they could win the league. I see no reason to change that. I mean, they're, they're losing fewer goals than anybody else. They're scoring more goals than anybody else. They seem fitter than anybody else. And I think of the three teams, they've probably got the most spending power when it comes mm -hmm. to January. So I see no reason why if they... If they you know, if George Burley keeps... That's an important point Andy makes about rolling off and Burley. If that falls apart, then they're in trouble. But at the moment, there's no reason why it should fall apart. John Hughes looking to be the first boss to plot a win over the league leaders. Russell Latip, he proved he still has the legs for the SPL. He's the key player in that team. Hearts without Roman Bednar, Michael Pospisil drafted in six of the starting 11 Scots. Referee Ian Bryan's commentary, Jock Brown with Mark Hakley. Russell Latipi takes possession instantly. And Stephen O'Donnell, formerly of Arsenal, plays it back to Craig Ireland. A bit of passing around the back for Pope. He's going to feel the ball and settle into the play. This is McAllister. Look at the Hartley. And he was barged into for the back by Kenny Milne. It was really a, a rather rash challenge that by Milne. Hartley thought he was fouled. Played along by Lima. Good play by O'Donnell. This is Latipi. Well, was there a foul there? Webster into the back of Darrell Duffy. That was a reckless challenge by Webster. Very big wall, that. <laughs> a decent effort by Lazabi. Very decent indeed. Didn't come down quickly. Now, that's the point of it being so close to goal. Camazola strong against O'Donnell. O'Donnell looks very determined. The Irishman's done well. Lovely play from Lazabi. A big gap. It goes for Duffy. Can he get there? He has. That's a penalty. And there's trouble for Trey Gordon, too. It's a red card for Trey Gordon. Fantastic play, must be said. A fantastic play from Latipi. Held off the ball on the halfway line. An inch measured pass for Duffy. Stonewall a penalty, that one. Mikel Pospisil is coming off. Now, he was an injury doubt before the game. So he is a player going to be sacrificed by Hearts to allow Steve Banks to come on. So it's Duffy against Banks. Well, that's a good penalty kick. Very composed, very assured. The keeper could do nothing about that. 1-0 to Falkirk. Awkward here for Presley. Duffy's in behind them, a great chance for Falk up in the second! Very well blocked by Steve Banks in goal, but the hearts were certainly exposed. Now it's with Camazola. Nielsen now very well forward for Hearts. That's a good sidestep. The ball in is missed, and Scatso has a chance! Another chance for Jankowskis and for Hartley! Three chances back to back, and Hearts can score. Chance for Duffy. He broke off Presley. It's gone in. It's a second goal for Falkirk. And the fates are not smiling on Hearts. It's that pace again, Jock. That blistering pace from Duffy. Put Stephen Presley under all sorts of pressure. Had to be picks out Laurie. He wants a runner ahead of him. Thompson delivers. Good running by Thompson. The block was made by Banks. And a very good attempt there by O'Neill on the rebound. Foul <laughs> by O'Neill and Jankowskis. Skatchel and Hartley over the ball. Skatchel takes it. It's a good ball in. And that is turned in by Presley. It's a goal back for Hearts, they're back in the match! 
Richard Hartley. That's one for Presley, and Lennon comes to make the catch. There's nothing wrong with that challenge from Chesnowskis. This is promising again for Hart. Here's Presley. No Nielsen. And Skatchel had that chance with a header. Lennon was certainly in trouble. Here comes Webster again. Little bit more at the moment. And here's Skatchel. No Presley. He's equalised. The Hearts. The Falkirk defence all at sea. And the captain saves the day for Hearts. O'Neill now, wide for Moutinho. Here's Moutinho again. Oh, he's done well. Moutinho! Oh, he could have snatched it at the end. What a good piece of play by the Portuguese striker. You know, I just felt there was a little bit uh, heebie-jeebies. Is that the right word? Coming to us in the second half. And I've just told you the reason why. that Because we were beating Hearts 2-0, one or two of them went, oh, oh, and we forgot to pass the ball. Stephen, have you claimed the match ball? No, um, it was a bizarre hat trick, you know, one in the wrong end and two uh, in the right end, but, uh, you know, I thought we showed fantastic spirit today. 2-0 down, down to 10 men, you know, people we just thought were dead and buried, but uh, we showed great togetherness and great spirit. Andy, will that feel like a victory for Hearts? Yeah, I think in the circumstances, Jim, it's, uh, it's a point gained rather than two dropped. And I think Stephen Presley is uh, right, it is great mental strength and they'll need plenty of that because everybody wants to beat them now and especially at the business end of the season, once you get into February and March, questions like that will be asked of hearts all the time. Craig, you saw them against Rangers at Tynecastle, were you impressed? Very impressed, yes, and equally impressed there, just for the clips I've seen. But I thought it was an outstanding game they played against Rangers and hearts uh, for all the, the acclaim they're getting are modest about it, in particular George Burley. I hear him saying, keep our feet in the ground, you know, a third will do us. Mm. That's the old psychological trick. I think Ar George would hope for better. Actually, they proved they had a bit of steel about them Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to lose games, they're going to have setbacks, but I think the cynics have been waiting for them to collapse. Now, I wasn't at the game, I was at Easter Road as, as this was happening, and there was a little bit of crowing going on when they heard they'd <laughs> lost a goalie, down to ten men, two behind... Uh, and you don't need to be at the game. All you need to do is look at these statistics and say, this is a team that isn't going to collapse. They might not win the league, but they're certainly not going to collapse. Andy, let's have a look at the penalty incident which started uh, Falkirk on their way yesterday. Uh, referee Ian Brines didn't seem to have any doubt at all about this. What about you? I think he got it spot on. I think it was fantastic play, first of all, from Russell Latipe. But I don't think there's any doubt that uh, had he gone past Craig Gordon, it was he, he would have been able to get the ball uh, into the net. So it's a clear and obvious goal-scoring opportunity and unfortunate for Popsicle that, he's, that uh, he had to be taken off, but good penalty. You didn't call him Popsicle, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> you, you meant to say Pospisile, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, there was a great chance for Hearts to get back into the game, into the second half. In fact, it was a triple chance. Various players having a pop here, but just no luck at all. Exactly. Well, this typifies Hearts. You know, they throw men forward when they get the opportunity, and there we have three great chances. Scatchel first. That, that's it, yes, that's a good hit from Scatchel's left foot, his favoured left foot, and Paul Hartley just stuck in below his foot there. Otherwise, I think he would have scooped it into the net. Now, I think there's a lack of understanding there between Stephen Presley and the replacement keeper. You know, Banks, now, I'm quite sure, had Craig Gordon still been in goal, that goal wouldn't have taken place. They would have managed to avert that, because the understanding is great, involving the back two, Webster and and Presley with the goalkeeper. Without a doubt, Hart, uh, Archie, there may have been crowing at Easter Road, but not once this happened. Hart's getting right back into the match with two goals. Well, it's snap, crackle and pop. No question at all about that. And uh, the way they, they, that he came back in particular, <clears throat> I mean, he pops up out of nowhere uh, twice. Uh, first of all, that way. Um, I mean, you hopefully will see him playing for Scotland like this and going up there and just popping in there again. That's marvellous stuff. Out of nowhere. Just remarkable that that ball that travels 60 yards is allow allowed to bounce. But even then, Falkirk weren't finished. They had a chance to win it late on. And Matina always almost curled one in. And I got his name right, didn't I? You got his name right, Andy. <laughs> uh, I'll try Julian. Well done, Jim. Uh, Simon, from a heart's point of view, surely when everybody is saying, you know, waiting for the bubble to burst, that is a championship contender style fight back. Absolutely. It was a, uh, like you say, everyone says the bubble's going to burst. And like people like Andy Walker saying that, you know, 
the Romanoff uh, Burley when there isn't any issues there you know they've come out and said there isn't one they keep mm. saying there is uh, and I think what Harsh showed yesterday was a different team from maybe years ago you know we rolled out the sleeves dug our, Got dug our in. heels in and uh, we came back and clawed a point that Got could prove result. invaluable later very good, Julian. We'll like that one. Another email from Derek Howitt who says, uh, had it been Celtic or Rangers getting a draw at Falkirk, they would be in crisis and yet Hearts get great credit, Archie. Well, it's only because the old firm have lost league games this season. Prior to last Saturday, uh, Hearts haven't. They've got an excellent de defence, regardless of what the, one of the punters said last week, solidified their midfield, got goal scorers. They've got spirit, as exemplified by the captain, so in that sense, you couldn't say it's a crisis. I think it's just maybe a little blip on the radar screen. Just a blip, Craig? Well, it may be more than a blip because, you know, I have a great faith in Hearts and what I've seen, but to how they cope with injuries. I thought Bednar was an outstanding forward when I saw him at Tynecastle against Rangers. And, of course, Brelli in midfield is the anchor player. If they can cope without those two, now with Celtic creeping up three points behind and Hearts to go to Celtic Park soon, the whole complexion could change. to Celtic's midfield is perhaps the feature that catches the eye immediately but crucial also is the decision to keep Celtic's top scorer John Hartson on the bench and move Chris Sutton forward to partner Craig Beatty up front to cover the injury sustained by Misiez Zuraski. No Craig Gordon of course in the Hearts lineup which presents an enormous challenge to Steve Banks his replacement. What this will do to Hearts defensive balance remains to be seen no Roman Bednar of course he's replaced by Post Pissel and Julian Brelier the Frenchman has recovered from injury well there we are off into a game and look at the date 15th of October and hearts remain unbeaten that simple statistic alone represents the almost unprecedented gauntlet being thrown down by this club to all SPL teams not just Celtic today Baldi didn't get hold of that. Here's Paul Hartley. He's going to let fly. Well, that's a Paul Hartley whom Celtic coveted last season. Tried to get him to Celtic Park. And no wonder with play like that. And a good attacking roll. Just overhead. I think he might just get it in. And that, I think, will be a free kick. Oh, it's just passed. No wonder he has his head in his hands, Andy Webster. He says, still in play, though. And it goes into touched away. Celtic just surviving at the moment. Kamura, he floated in the far side. There's Lennon with a chance and just touched away. Effort and goal, it's in. Beatty's done it. It falls to Beatty. Still a, a long way to go. And in it flies. I think it was up maybe off the heel of somebody there. It certainly deceived the goalkeeper. Thompson to take, it's a decent one again, Valdi is up, off the post. Nielsen. Boss Bissell running himself into difficulties, Jan Kokas. Scatchel trying to come in there, still has a chance, and he scores, Scatchel gets the equaliser, and looked at first as if he might not be able to do anything with this, a beautiful ball put through there, little dummy by Hartley, and I think that's bad defending, though. I think Telfer should have been much more positive than that. And because he wasn't, Celtic suffered. One. Look at one to the near post. The goalkeeper almost deceived. And just passed there by Petrov. 
Yeah, the goalkeeper doesn't look particularly happy at the moment. Watch this ball again played back to him and seemed to be caught off balance again and Hearts just surviving. That's a good ball. Petro trying to go forward. There was a bit of a dive, I have to say. Referee didn't warn him, he just uh, moved the play on. Kamatsola. Picked up by Nielsen. There's a lovely ball through to Jan Kokos, and what a chance he's missed. I think the likes of Dent now would have put a chance like that away. Beautiful play again. Petrov just passed, good move there, and a very simple one. Beautiful play there, Petrov, Thompson, will he let fly? He does! Great save! Jankalkas is Hartley. Celtic supporters loved the way that Petro leapt on him there. Oh, that was a deflection as well. Good effort there initially by Telford, but there was the slightest deviation in the trajectory here that it was, and the goalkeeper did well to get behind it. Good claims there by Baldi. Here's Cacho. Was that well? Scacho coming forward again. His first touch let him down. That was a beautiful move there by Hart. What a marvellous piece of play that was by Scatto. The old-fashioned one-two. There he was, in on it. And his first touch let him down. Here's Maloney. This was the reverse pass. Maloney again. That's a free kick. Now then, Alan Thompson, had he been on the pitch, would have taken this. This looks like a booking. He is. Oh, brilliantly saved. That was a superb free kick. It really was going all the way. We were right behind this shot. That's a great, great save, you know. It's deep, Webster's there, it's Gatchel goes in, and it's Webster! Well, <laughs> that's a central defender's shot at goal. He's only scored a goal this season, a single goal this season, and I, I think he was rather put off by McManus coming, or Vicky rather, coming beside him there. Dan Kalkus, neat little touch, Post Pistol. comes back to give some support he'll get the free kick for that Maloney relishing his participation as a substitute really getting involved both at the back and uh, up front there's a touch on and just over first was all in Jan Kalkas went for that it was an excellent ball, the kind of ball that Celtic uh, usually exploit very well. Exhortation there by Gordon Strachan. Trying to get as much out of his team as he can. Hartson did get the little one in and there's Sutton coming off of that. Good understanding that Hartson would get the ball, that he would deliver it, and he did. This is uh, typical Hartson judging his leap well, and there's Sutton. Not enough conviction in that. Here's Maloney. BT chasing after this. Looks for support. On a corner kick. Your team is stronger in the air than Celtic. There's a run by Sutton across, and there's John Hartson. 
just underneath it. And I wonder, ought he to have had better cover than that? He should have put it away. They run away from him. Jack Carcass. And there goes the final whistle. It's ended in a draw. Hearts remain unbeaten. They go on there. Phenomenal run. One of the most crucial games for them this season. They've come, they've stood up to the test. They came back crucially, very quickly, after being a goal down. The two goal scorers played extremely well, but it does show you, if we needed the proof, that this is going to be a very exciting league championship indeed. The final score is Celtic 1, Hearts 1. That was one manager, the other one is with us here in the studio. George, huge result for Hearts? Yeah, I mean, it's always going to be a tough game. Uh, and going to Parkhead, uh, we were unbeaten. So it was important we were come away with something, which we did. It was a, a cracking game. I mean, the, we've seen loads of chances, a lot of going with action. But um, I felt going there and um, getting a credible draw uh, puts us in a good position for you know, for the rest of the season. And as we saw there, the first part of the second half, you, you guys fancied your chances of winning all three points. Yeah, it was, it was a good game. Um, there's no doubt it could have went either way. Um, and, you know... Where we came from at the beginning of the season, you, you know, you've brought a few new players in. Last season, it was a difficult time for the club on the field. Um, you know, we, we, you've got to have a feel of it, and we're beginning to get a feel of it. Um, so far, we're undefeated. Going to Celtic Park has gave us a lot of encouragement, but we know, as Gordon says, there's a lot of teams involved with it. Um, it's early days, but um, all credit um, to the way my team's performed so far, and, and it's making it a smashing league. Did you feel before that match, certainly in the build-up up to it, that maybe certain sections of the media thought this is the one that Hearts are going to stumble over? Well, I mean, there's always plenty of talk in the media as far as, um, you know, are you going to challenge over firm? If you lose a game, is the bubble going to burst? But um, we, we've got a bunch of players that are very professional. And every game we've went into, we've gave it our best shot. We've, we've managed to stay unbeaten. And there's been a lot of hard work in the last few months. But we also know there's a lot of work still to be done. We're, no, we're in very early stages of rebuilding the squad. There's a lot of improvement still needed. But um, we're, we're enjoying working hard. Archie, he's underplaying his hand, isn't he? Well, uh, I said several weeks ago that hearts were built for the marathon, not for a short <laughs> sprint. And I think we can forget these arguments about whether the bubble's going to burst or whether they're credible or not. I think that's been well enough proved. The most interesting thing for the whole of Scottish football, of course, is that the Scottish football teams, all the others, have been padlocked to the old firm and what they did, um, almost as if they were subservient to them. He's proved, or hearts have proved, um, that they can come and get results and they can stay in the top of the league. And I think that's going to be very important for everybody. It inspires everybody. Andy, as we saw there, you were at the game as well. They had yeah. three chances to score before Celtic at the opening goal. Yeah, I'm probably one of those you're referring to, Jim. I thought uh, Celtic would win. I thought yeah. Hearts would uh, lose their first game. But they started so well. Paul Hartley, in the very early stages, brought out a great save from the keeper. And uh, this free kick, I thought, was a great chance. Webster in a great position. All he has to do is just get his head on it. But he mistimed it. And then, of course, they had another uh, just sort of scramble in the goal mouth. McManus puts it on to Pospisil there, and they could easily have taken the lead. George, how did you feel when you went a goal behind? Did you feel your players would bounce back as quickly as they did? Well, I don't think we panicked at all, put it that way. We've been in situations this season where we've been behind, but uh, we've always had that belief that uh, we can get there. As you see here, uh, you know, it was a good ball, far post. You know, it's came out to BT. We've tried to challenge it. A little bit unfortunate. I think it's come off Julian Breller and, and went to the top of the corner. And these things happen. But we've always got belief we can score goals. And that man in particular? Who does catch you? I mean, his record speaks for itself. He never gives in. He's always wanting to get forward. He's strong, he's quick, he's enthusiastic. And he's always liable to, as I say, get a goal for First of all, George, uh, you have brought Freddie Bobic in to have a look at him. What's the latest on that? I think with anything, when you, you've got a squad, and, and as I said before, we're in very early stages. There's a long way to go before we feel that we're anywhere near the finished um, article. You're looking to improve, and that's what we're doing. We tried one or two players, players before the, the last deadline, which didn't come off. There's no doubt that most clubs will look for players um, uh, for January. And I think w with anything, it's a continual improvement. And, um, and as a manager, you know, you've got sort of standards and levels you want to reach. 
and so far we, we've done very well but um, you know, I still think we've got further to go and there's more in the side so unless we keep improving people will overtake us so I think that's the key to it because I'm sure Rangers and Celtic and Hibs and other teams will get stronger so it's up to us to continue that improvement and hopefully stay at the top Archie I can show you on the screen here Hearts record so far this season that it is quite phenomenal isn't it? Yeah, it's all about money, though, Jim. I mean, basically, you, you've heard uh, Sepp uh, Blatter talking about the amounts of money going into football. Some of it you might consider to be obscene, but it's a marketplace. Uh, people are prepared to put the money in, in, in football, which is surprising, to say the least. Who's going to make money out of football? So I think the Hearts supporters... Um, by the way, they won at Celtic Park last season before sure did, George yeah. came and yeah. so on. So winning at Celtic Park <laughs> isn't unusual to Hearts. But in the longer term, it's going to be interesting to see, uh, and George is here, uh, what he's going to be given uh, in the, the January window. Because a famous German once said to me, I'll buy, in fact, David Murray, he said, I'll buy the Scottish League. Now, what he meant by that was he had huge resources. And if Rangers struggled, he would go out and buy a player. Two things, he doesn't have the money. And secondly, the transfer windows are not as open as they used to be. But it's, it's, success is down to money and investment. George, shorter term, you have three league games coming up, two of them at home. Now, with the greatest respect to Dunfermline and to Kilmarnock, who gave you a very good game on the opening day of the season, you're looking there at six points before meeting Hibs at Easter Road, aren't you? Well, every game is difficult. And, I mean, we are certainly um, not getting carried away, however we're playing. I mean, we're la you know, our last game again before Celtic was Falkirk and we're 2-0 down. So it's all difficult, you know, but it's a case of, you know, it's, it's not all about money. You know, it isn't all about money. It's getting the best out of your side and the right formation. I mean, we've only spent money in two players this season. Sure. You know, we've got a number of free transfers in there, but the spirit's the key. The spirit's the key, working with players, development, you know, trying to bring young players through and get the whole club there. And, of course, if you've got money, you can do things quicker. But the key to any success, that continued improvement, is to get the squad to work together. Right, before we let you go then, Gordon Strachan said there are four teams challenging for the title. You still say you're only playing for third. Are you going for it? No, we are playing for first. But um, at the beginning... You are playing for first? Of course we're playing for first. That's uh, not what you said before. No, no, we are playing for first. But at the end of the day, realistically, when the season started... You know, if we could take the club into Europe, because remember where we've came, OK, the club did win at Celtic Park, but they did finish 42 points behind the old firm last year. So it's a case of that improvement. And um, if we can get into Europe, it would be great. But now we're in first place. We're not going to give it up easy. George, thank you. Very well, Saturday's match between Hearts and Dunfermline was important for both clubs, but up until four hours before the kick-off, it certainly wasn't due to receive top billing. Sure, Hearts were hoping to complete a full round of league matches unbeaten, but no one expected the bombshell news, which was to become the major talking point of the weekend. George Burley and Hearts had parted company. 24 hours earlier, everything had been maroon in the Hearts garden. Vladimir Romanov had taken his shareholding to a fully controlling 55% and everybody seemed happy with what had been a stupendous start to the season. Indeed, five days earlier, manager George Burley had spoken happily on Scotsport SPL about club spirit and going for the title. The spirit's the key, working with players, development, you know, trying to bring young players through and get the whole club there. And of course, if you've got money, you can do things quicker. But the key to any success, that continued improvement, is to get the squad to work together. If we can get into Europe, it'll be great. But now we're in first place, we're not going to give it up easy. By Saturday morning, however, Burley had gone. It still wasn't clear whether he'd walked or been fired, and the chairman was saying nothing till after the game. Hart's first priority was beating Dunfermline. Commentary from Rob McLean. And Kask is helped out by Hartley. Tried the volley from 25 yards, took a deflection and it's the first corner kick of the match. Expect this to be fizzed in at some pace. Well, it could have been caught by Alan McGregor. Punched it and the deflected shot from Rudy Scarshaw cannons off the crossbar. Well, you were looking for McGregor to clutch that one unchallenged. He flapped it out and Scarshaw was so close to opening the scoring. So close. The goal number nine of the season. That was Scott Thompson's header. Rudy Scatchel threads it through for Jan Kaskis. Tried to work it on for Kamazola. Scatchel involved again. And how? There's no stopping Scatchel. His ninth goal of the season. 
so much composure about Hearts and the confidence that comes from heading towards an 11th SPL game unbeaten. Shields heading it away. You get the feeling it's damage limitation for Dunfermline and they just can't seem to limit the damage. It's 2-0. Two in just over two minutes and it's Michael Pospisil this time. And Dunfermline contributed to their own downfall there. It was sluggish defending to say the least. Jan Keskis making a nuisance of himself. And Pospisil within inches of scoring his second and Hart's third. He's going through the full repertoire for us, Rudy Scatchel. I think the Hearts fans like him. Scatchel's free kick, what a delivery for Andy Webster. A huge chance for goal number three. And Webster failed to take it. Fussies. Pospisil plays it wide for Chesnaskis. Skipping away from Zambernardi's challenge. And a decent curling effort from the Lithuania. Scatchel and Hartley over the ball. Those two combine. And it's Rudy Scatchel! What an opportunity for his second of the game. Darren Young hauled back by Stephen Presley and there's major trouble for the Hearts captain he switched off for one fateful moment there Darren Young was in behind him an avoidable red card the talking now done on the field the Hearts skipper reflected on the pre-match news about the manager's departure He's been uh, a very, very popular man within the dressing room. He's a first-class coach, very much a player's manager. You know, as I've said, very popular with the players. The training sessions he put on were, were second to none, and uh, we're bitterly disappointed that, that he's to, to move on. Mm -hmm. Were you given any indication as to why he's moved on? No indication at all. Uh, you know, we, we as players are solely employees of the football club, and... Uh, Regardless of what happens, we, we, we have to continue being professional. And uh, I thought we did that again today. Then at six o'clock, Chairman George Fox emerged with the official party line on Burley's departure. How many managers will be able to work the way Mr Romanov works, i.e. he buys the players and the manager's just asked to be a simple coach? That's not the case. That's not the case. He said that's the case. That is, that is certainly not the case. Now, of course... George Burley and Mr Romanov have both said that's no, the no, case. No, no, it's not. The case has been much more complicated than that. And so it went on. But whatever the spin, the deteriorating relationship between Burley and Romanov has always been a worry for Andy Walker here on Scotsport SPL. I'm not convinced that that relationship between the manager and the owner is going to serve them well in the, in the long run. Because I think when you've got the owner bringing in players, eventually that's going to be a problem for, for George Burley. Tonight, though, a rallying call to the Hearts supporters from a former chairman who remains determined that momentum built up shouldn't now be lost. I think, Jim, there'll be, at the moment, uh, two clubs in Glasgow um, who are simply waiting for Hearts to fall flat in their face. And what I would say is I would appeal to everybody, all Hearts people, supporters, directors, players, everybody... Um, all Tyne Castle people to pull together um, and keep hearts where we've managed to get to this season. That would be the message I would like to put across. Romanov now rules hearts. The new man coming in should bear that in mind. Actually, there has been much speculation since Saturday, but we still don't truly know what went on between those two men. No, I don't think the conspiracy people will, uh, getting the rumours going will last as long as the JFK conspiracy. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I think somebody has to break the silence. I mean, even George, I don't know what kind of conditions have been put down. Notice in the interview on Saturday evening, uh, I noticed this word um, 
a mutual uh, confidentiality was stressed uh, by George Fuchs there. There's going to be all kinds of rumours. I mean, I've heard all kinds of rumours. I'm sure my, my colleagues have uh, as well. And at the end of the day, it's not going to serve the constituency well. The heart supporters deserve um, more clarification, more transparency, and so far it, ha it, it hasn't come. And I think they're going to fall flat in their face if it doesn't come. Graham, uh, we have no facts as such, but uh, fairly informed speculation that Romanov was unhappy that Burley had either been approached or tapped up by Aston Villa. You've heard that as well. Well, I've heard that and I've heard four or five different versions of what happened. As Archie's implying, I think there's been a lot of fairly loose journalism here. Nobody's quite penetrated to the true story. But what we can take for granted was that there was a, a clash of personalities. We know that. We know Romanov is quite strong-willed about what he, how he, who he wants in the team. He, he's the paymaster. He has resurrected hearts. Uh, Burley, I think George Burley, my own personal view is that George Burley could probably have handled it a bit better behind the scenes, but he wasn't having any interference from Romanov. The bottom line, though, is that uh, Romanov is the most important person at Hearts. There are some clubs where the manager is the most important figure, but at Ibrox that isn't the case. David Murray's the most important man. At Tynecastle, if it's a question of a personality clash and Romanov or Burley going, it has to be Burley. Romanov is resurrecting Hearts, and that couldn't be endangered. Andy, you've pointed out the problem all along. You've taken some criticism for that from the Hearts supporters. You've been proved right in the end. The question now is, what other manager would accept those conditions and that level of meddling? That's going to be a, a, a continual problem. And Hearts clearly, in my view, have something to hide. Why else would they insist on a confidentiality clause? George Burley, we're all led to believe, has nothing to hide. Everyone's saying that there was a problem with the owner insisting on players coming to the, the club and he wanted more and more Lithuanians in the side. So why have they said to George Burley, uh, we insist on a confidentiality clause? Clearly, Hearts don't want George Burley to speak. I don't think it's the other way about. Archie, uh, they've said tonight, Romanov said tonight, Valdas Ivanovskis, it will not be, definitely not, so it's not his fellow countrymen, uh, but they are spreading the net far and wide, it would appear. Well, it's going to be difficult because they've got to explain why the last manager left. Uh, I mean, we can talk all we like about this. You can either lob a, a bomb into Tynecastle to get the answer, or you can try to be a statesman about it. But at the end of the day, if they're not going to, if they're going to clam up and not going to see anything, it's all about conjecture. And that's all it is. I don't know who's going to take the job. I, by the way, somebody said to me earlier tonight, uh, nobody will take it. There'll be a queue for the job. Maybe not the best talent, but anybody, that, if there's a vacancy in football nowadays, there's a queue for it. But prestige, prestige, I don't think anybody will have that who goes for that job. Let's hear from some Hearts fans with Julian. Thanks, Jim. Sandy, starting with you, the uh, victory at the weekend overshadowed by what was happening. What's your thoughts about uh, what's been going on? Well, first and foremost, I think that Hearts have to come out and let the fans know exactly what's going on. But the fans also have to just continue getting straight behind the team. It's most important that we continue at the top of the league and strive to get into the Champions League. And who do you think is the man that's most likely, or who would you like to see coming into the position vacated by Burley? Well, all the rumours seem to say that it's going to be Bobby Robson at the moment. Uh, I would actually like to see him come in with a younger manager underneath him. Right. Robo left Ross County today. Do you think it could be Robo and Robson, a, a Robo, 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 Bobby type <laughs> set up there at Town Castle, or is that imagination? It's hard to see. I don't know if John Robertson would come back. I know his heart's there, eh? But, mm. but it's the usual kind of speculation which we've come to expect. I mean, the names in the heart. Sunis was there at the weekend. Uh, you know, they're talking about Lothar Matthias, Mick McCarthy. Uh, Neve Oscala. Yeah, I see the most likely, do you think, after Robson? Well, he said that he needed three months right. to in make up a decision, and that's three months, so is there something in that? Mm. I don't know. Well, who does know? I mean, a lot of emails, as you know, Jim, coming in since it happened on Saturday. Alan Doyle kind of hits the nail on the head. We as fans have a right to know exactly why Burley left. We are paying for this confidentiality agreement through purchases of merchandise and tickets, therefore we are part of the agreement. Legally, probably not. Morally, I think he's got a point, Jim. He maybe has. Craig McIntosh has emailed as well. He says, Hearts winning after Burley's departure shows it was the team that improved and not the manager. Well, let's hear now from the Hearts chief executive, Phil Anderton. This was what he had to say earlier tonight. Uh, I'm not for one minute trying to make out that other people in the club or outside of the club don't have views on who should be in the team. Supporters, myself and others. 
but ultimately it's down to the manager to choose who goes out in the park and that has been the case uh, and will be going forward. And one man's name who you never mentioned there was Mr Romanoff. Well of course Mr Romanoff especially if he's the guy who's funding the club. How healthy is that? I think it's uh, perfectly healthy to have people with a view on how the team should be constructed. Where it becomes unhealthy uh, and I concur absolutely is when um, you know, the, the manager is not given that say on who should be in the team but that's not the case. Raman Bardwaj asking the questions. Graham, what do you make of what Phil Anderton had to say there? <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, there's always moral indignation about a confidentiality clause. I don't know why people get bothered about it. If, if hearts don't want their dirty washing to be hung out in public like any other business, that's, that's fine by me. I, I don't care about that. I think that when I say that Burley's probably handled it wrongly, I think that Romanoff, to a certain extent, did have the right to ask vigorous questions about the team. So long as Burley's autonomy as the final arbiter of the team was not sacrificed. I think Romanoff has every right to ask some questions. It's interesting uh, that Bobby Robson's name is mentioned. I, I think Hearts will approach Bobby Robson this week. I don't think Bobby Robson will take the job, but I do think if he does take the job, he'll handle that situation differently. He'll be more diplomatic and less spiky towards uh, Romanoff than Burley was. I think there'll also be a problem with the, with the players, Graham. It was an unmistakable gesture, Jim, to see Paul Hartley and Rudy Scatchel say on their, their T-shirts after the mm. game, for the gaffer. Now, there, there are players who are out of contract there, and I think there will be unrest in the dressing room. And having played with Celtic at a very difficult time when all the unrest and the chaos was dominating the back pages, some of the front pages as well, it gets to the people most who care about the club, and that's the Scottish contingent. Craig Gordon, Stephen Presley, Andy Webster and Paul Hartley. Archie, these players, though, they're in a great position in the SPL. They'll surely want to go in and win it. They'll never get a better chance. No, they won't, but back to a point that Graham made here <clears throat> about the business, the football business. Football is rather different from any other business. Uh, you could maybe liken it to the fact that shareholders will turn up eventually and ask why certain moves and, and, and swaps or, or sackings were made on a board. The constituency, part of it is down there in our studio tonight, asking and wondering what's happening. Well, George they're paying, might, a, they're George, paying out season George tickets. George might on. need protecting. Well, if he does need protecting, I'm well, happy with it. Well, that. I don't know. We don't, we don't Who know does need need protecting? Well, we don't know. That is, that, is pre that, that is precisely why myself and others and the supporter down there are saying, explain it to us. Graham, what, what might you need protecting from? Well, I, I, I don't know. I do know that in, in George Burley's, the end of George Burley's career at Derby County, there were certain issues there that were controversial. And Derby County didn't want to speak about it. George Burley didn't want to speak about it. Funnily enough, we've got a similar situation again. I, ha I happen to think George Burley's an excellent coach. I happen to suspect there is nothing untoward in terms of but, what George, but George Burley's fact, been doing. But, Graham, but the sorry. point is, if there is, if there is something there, I, I resist... <laughs> I respect the right of a confidentiality clause. As a journalist, well, we always I, object to it. I, 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 legalistically, I respect it. But morally, the inference being there might be something sinister. Now, there, there might not be. I, there might be, there might not be. But, but and I think it's unfair in that you're sense. You're speaking as if we've got a moral right, an indignant moral right to know. None of us have a right to know. Well, these people ultimately. down there have a right to know. And They're we don't have a right to go on any further. Stars. We're going to have to move on here. situation indeed for Hearts not to be led up by the iconic figure of their captain Stephen Presley suspended for this one and missing his first league game of the season but just as significant as the absence of Paul Hartley injured who's been so influential in midfield this season Jimmy McAllister and young Chris Berra filled the vacancies well, Kelly haven't had their troubles to seek with injuries either. David Lilly and Gary Locke, who played on uh, Sunday both. And Locke, of course, the former Hearts player, they both missed this one. In come Ryan Dodds. And getting his chance on the big stage, the man from Stranra, Fraser Wright. Well, the first good news is the rain has ceased. It was an absolute deluge when we arrived at Tynecastle. You had to begin to wonder whether the game would go on but uh, we were told that it is a very good pitch indeed it takes a fair amount of rain it has to given the conditions over the past week and indeed it might make for an interesting game there could be mistakes in defense on a very slippery surface Killy played 
more than tolerably well at the weekend against uh, Celtic. There's this boy, Naismith, coming in there. Naismith again, looking very bright. Good play by Kelly. Didn't quite get away with that. Foskosil had put that down, claiming for the push there. Oh, that's a brilliant save. Graham Smith getting right across to that. That was a very, very difficult ball indeed to take on this kind of surface. There's uh, the run forward again. Another free kick. Scatchel very, very difficult to stop when he puts his mind to it and his body to it like this. Scatchel taking a close look at that, then decides to go into the wall. Just not goes through, and it's another excellent save. The referee is waving play on after that uh, collision. There it is. That's two saves in ten minutes this lad has had. Remarkable entry into Scottish football, this man. Deserving of all the plaudits he's getting. But that's a good-looking ball, and it's ill just past. Foster the save. That ball away very poorly. Fowler trying to backtrack. That's a magnificent ball in there. Jen Corkash, he scores. Archer in the lead. A glorious diagonal ball there. Coming from that initial mistake by Fowler. And I think the Kelly manager must be incensed about how cheaply Kamana gave the ball away. Here's Boyd. Oh, that was a superb effort. Very difficult chance indeed. We have a change of match official this evening. Something's happened to Stuart Dougal. I don't know at this moment. But uh, Mr. O'Reilly has now taken over. Foster so. Scatcho. Controlled that beautifully. It looked as if he had lost the ball, then got back at it. Well, there's Jack Cockers. Well, should be played into the middle. Nate Smith is there. He can't get to it. Well defended. Once again, it's there. And oh, that's appealed for the penalty. Not given. The Kamana players are gassed at that. That ball was hit in very, very hard indeed. Here, post well put down. Scatcho can't get a shot in. He was eager for it. Took up the right position again. Andy Webster is in there. Once again, the goalkeeper gets it. Supporters in the back run now. You feel this game's in the bag. Well, oh, I think it might be now. Post for so. Yes, it will be. No. And just bust. McAllister. That would have killed it. Well, they caught up the chorus of the crowd there. It inspired them for that. Final effort as the final whistle does go after that miss. Final score, Hodge 1, Kamarik 0.
Well, Archie's joined us in the studio, and the success story continues, the even without a manager. The bubble hasn't burst. <laughs> I mean, you travelled through from the west, and oh, hearts will go this time. They'll collapse. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You know, the big difference, Jim, was atmosphere. Mm. Two years ago, even last season, that game, a midweek game, and that kind of weather would have drawn about 9,000. It was full. Yeah. The heart supporters are behind them. And what was interesting about it, because Killy gave them a good game, played some smashing football mm. in the second half. The, the trouble is he didn't have a direct shot at uh, Gordon all night. Uh, they had some lovely balls played into the box. It was either taken by Gordon or Andy Webster. Webster was absolutely superb. You felt there might just be a wee bit of frailty there with Presley not beside mm. him, but he covered up. There's one particular, and Craig as a, a centre-back would have appreciated this, going towards his own goal and heading the ball clear, which could have been a big mistake. Now, we saw the two sides to Hearts, uh, the pulsating... Uh, blitzkrieg to start off with, which might have swept them into a three-goal lead. Mm -hmm. Good goalkeeping, as we saw. And then the second half, where they seemed to, if you like, I'm not saying they're jaded now, far from that, but they became a bit flat. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when you see the kind of breakaways that can be done by Scatchell, none of these happened in the second half. Craig, you were there as well last night. Possibly not their best performance this season, but great for the Hearts fans to see Jankowskis getting on the score sheet. It contributes so much for them apart from scoring goals, but they needed that goal last night, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, I think George Burley said that was the only thing that was lacking in the big fella's game, was actually getting the ball in the back of the net, and last night scoring the goal at an important time, but uh, Kilmarnock had the ball, we're going forward, look dangerous, and then look at the quality of this ball from Skatchel. It's absolutely magnificent, hard to defend, then you're one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, perfect finish. Kilmarnock, I'm like Archie, I thought Kilmarnock matched them all over the park, but if you see the chances, Kilmarnock didn't create great chances. Hearts did. They really worked to kill a goalkeeper. And because of that, I think they just shaded the game and deserved to win. And actually, as you both mentioned, the Kilmarnock goalkeeper was in fantastic form last night. Yeah, he was. I mean, if they had crumbled early on in the game, then I think Hearts would have run up, uh, not a cricket score, but they would won much more easily than they did. But the point about it is, Jim, uh, in, in the longer term, we're talking about a team that can win a game that didn't play all that brilliantly, looked a bit flat at times, but yet came away with maximum points. That's how you win a league. Craig, the latest name in the frame is Claudio Ranieri. What do you think is going to happen there? Well, I don't know. That's because Hearts haven't come out and told us anything. Everybody's going to speculate for days and days. I was at the game last night. At half time, the fans were shouting at the, at the chairman and the owner, tell us the truth. They want to know what's going on. They want to know what happened with George Burley. They can't believe the part had come with the manager when you're top of the league. And the fans will continue to do that until Hearts either come out and tell us what happened or bring in a new manager. But Archie, briefly, these quality of names are normally only associated with the old firm. Yeah, it's changed. The, the whole aspect of this has changed. We go back to Rangers again. Rangers are at the crossroads. They could, they could if they go the way they're going on, they'll struggle to finish fourth. Just to recap our top story tonight, Graham Ricks has been appointed the new first-team coach at Hearts. He will not be, as George Burley was, the manager. Archie McPherson, Jeremy McNee and Andy Walker all with me here in the Scotsport SPL studio. Archie, this story, of course, broke yesterday. It's been confirmed tonight. He'll be unveiled tomorrow. Surprised? Uh, yes, in a sense I'm surprised, uh, not in terms of the context of uh, the Romanovs there, but uh, surprised about the, the appointment itself. I don't think he's any particularly great track record as a manager, certainly not, though it's a head coach he's been appointed as. But we all know the personal baggage he has to carry because of indiscretions in the past, and that's the first thing that the Hearts supporters uh, noted. And it does indicate to me that this regime, which might at the end of the day be successful for Hearts, being particularly ruthless, don't care a jot about people's feelings about matters like that. And given the turbulent week that they've had and all the things that have happened, to produce this is to their community in Edinburgh in particular, almost like uh, fanning the flames. Jerry, we know that Scottish football fans can be merciless. He's in for a tough time. He certainly is. Uh, I don't think there, there's any doubt about that. But, you know, I, I just think Romanov showed a complete disregard for the Hearts fans. And I, I think I said at the time of, of Burley's departure. The interesting thing now, Jim, is that uh, this guy's got to get it right. Romanov has got to deliver this championship. And, and so has Ricks. And, you know, a director of football will probably be brought in to report back to, to Romanov. But if Hearts do not win the league this season, the fans will say if Burley had been here, it would have been different. And that's going to be the big, big pressure. Andy, your problem all along was the relationship between Romanov and the then manager, George Burley. The yep. fact that Ricks is being termed the first-team coach, 
that'll suit Romanov, surely. Yeah, it certainly makes a, a difference. And uh, we don't know as yet who will identify prospective new players. As of now, Romanov's done a, a pretty decent job. But um, Graham Ricks, they tell me he's a great football coach, but uh, I, I don't understand why they don't. If they're going down this route of a first-team coach with a director of football, why not keep John McGlynn there? He's got a great relationship with the players. He's a good coach. Well, Archie, um, Drew Balfour has been a Hearts fan for 46 years, one of hundreds who's emailed us tonight. At no time has he been so angry, he says. Uh, Romanov names Graham, Mitch, uh, Graham Rich. He's gone against his word of installing a world experienced manager or even a big name. Well, this is the test for the Hearts community. Remember, Hearts for years have done nothing. And suddenly, something arrives, top of the league, what looks like a great manager... Now it's all upset. But at the end of the day, uh, Andy was at uh, Tyne Castle, and I think we'll be seeing his report later on. They had a big crowd there again. So if they keep winning, it's a test for them because they were fed up being second best. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride, I think is one of the, the websites. Now they've had success. If they keep winning, I think the supporters will still turn up. <laughs> Scatchell over the ball. Five in the box for the home team. Scatchell's delivery picked out Stephen Presley. And Hearts could have been ahead inside 45 seconds. McCracken's header. And he doing the defending again. Presley beats Miller. That's Grelier. Mikkel Yunus. Ford alongside him. The reverse pass for Paul Hartley. They've scored this time. There's no stopping Hearts. An incredible opening to this match. High tempo. High skill level as well. And a beautifully taken goal there by Paul Hartley. But it's still got a hand to it, but he couldn't keep it out after Mikkel Yunus had played in the Hearts midfielder for his fifth goal of the season. McCracken won the header, Brelier knocks it down for Hartley. Just kept the ball moving to Fisas. Takis Fisas on his right foot, what a good effort. Elliot's header. Pospisil gets it down, looking for support. And there's a clumsy challenge and a needlessly conceded free kick because Pospisil was not going to do any immediate damage in that area. Scatchel plays it in. And it's gone in. I don't think Michael Pospisil got a touch. And it's Rudy Scatchel's 10th goal of the season. Hearts in control. Mikkel Yunus. Pospisil gets a touch. After you. No, after you. It's Pospisil again. Not far away. Presley to Hartley. The crossfield ball for Rudy Scatchel. Dropping invitingly. And it was a stretch for Stilly to make the save. Saul Mikkel Yunus, great pass for Rudy Scatchel, played in for Mikkel Pospisil, second chance, and foiled for the second time. Alan Archibald, the long ball from Ritchie, headed away by Webster. Archibald's pass comes off Paul Hartley. If he squeezes this into the middle, it's surely number three. And it is for Michael Pospisil. 3-0 Hearts, 12 minutes after the restart. Well, that was misfortune for Alan Archibald, you might say, because his 
attempted release of the ball they are cannoned off Hartley the Hearts midfielder was in and he was always going to take the right option and that was to set up Pospisil for an easy finish his third Hearts goal and 3-0 now for the home team really easing himself away from Robson he's has to scatch up Mark Kerr Colin Samuel chance to get in behind it's a dangerous ball in and what an opportunity for Barry Robson to get one back and they won't want to invite Dundee United back into this game even at 3-0 ahead and they just have done penalty conceded badly timed challenge won by Barry Robson Barry Robson he had two attempts and still couldn't beat Craig Gordon. It wasn't the best penalty you've ever seen. It was a very impressive save. Michael Yunus, lively. I don't think he knows what he's going to do next, and his opposite number has no chance. Great ball in for Mikel Pospisil foiled by the crossbar and couldn't tuck it away either at the second attempt all over at Tancastle and Hearts go back to the top of the SPL with a very conclusive 3-0 win against Dundee United the players take it enormous credit because it's been a difficult week for them also they take you know as I say enormous credit for going out there Taking the game with the scruff of the neck very early, getting a good goal, got the crowd behind them, the crowd were immense, uh, followed up with another goal by, by Rudy, and we got us in a really good position for half time. said, as long as we don't slip up, then you know, we, you know, we, we win the game. You know. The Romanovs don't look too pleased with the win, but they should have been. Hearts were very impressive. Callum Elliott was terrific all day. Look how he drags Paul Ritchie out of position, just enough to let Hartley through for the opening goal. Further away from the box, his one-touch control and layoff here puts Michelinus away. And when his striking partner Pospisil loses possession here, Elliot's first thought is to press the ball high up the pitch, and United can't get out easily. As this move develops, he's away into space again. Beats McCracken to the ball, and I think he's a bit unlucky not to get the foul just outside the box. This time he shows down the left-hand side, and with nothing on, he's quite happy to win a corner. But as a striker, at some point he'll be judged on goals, and this is something he'll have to work on. He's predominantly right-footed, but he'll certainly need to improve on his weaker left side. Late in the game, he gets an even better chance with McCracken struggling here. Elliot can't ask for a better opportunity than this, and he has to learn to be more ruthless. Julian Brellier does a great job destroying attacking moves from the opposition and this is a great example of him here reading the danger and getting a tackle in but he's also got composure when it's needed happy enough here just to let a move start from the other side this time Brellier feeds Elliot on the halfway line where both his control and distribution are excellent this ends up being another good tackle from Brellier although why a man with Samuel's pace wants to come inside I don't know but Brellier dealt with it, and not for the first time this season. Hearts were streets ahead of United in both ability and desire. Walker praises Hearts, 7th November 2005. Uh, Keith, 2-0 Derby defeat, then 3-0 at the weekend. It's, it's a good swing, surely the bounce-back ability should silence the critics about Hearts. Well, everybody last week was saying that our bubble was burst, and it just goes to prove that the team have got a good team spirit. I mean, we play for each other, you saw there with the last goal, Hartley could have shot. Most players would. He passes it to Pospisil. Game's over and done with. So Points good for Pospisil, bag. good for Hartley. You know, his distribution, obviously, is good. He's hitting form again after that injury. Well, he was posted absent in the, the derby game, but, you know, everybody says you're too back, back too quickly from an injury. But then, Sadie's performance, he ran the show, as he always does. Well, Hearts don't need a manager. They're carrying on winning. Well, Julian, they do have a manager. He's coming in tomorrow. It's Graham Rex and Jerry. He's inheriting a winning team. Yeah, I think, first of all, Jim, you say well done for the professionalism of John McGlynn and the players, and uh, I trust uh, the players will continue that. But this is the crucial moment now. After the internationals are over and they all come back, 
Will they be able to work for this man? Will they like his training methods? And if things start to go wrong, that's when they'll go wrong. And that's where the, the Hearts fans could turn. So they've got to hope that this works. It's going to be, I think, a difficult time for the club. Two changes for Aberdeen from their CIS defeat at Fir Park. Michael Hart in for Scott Severin, who broke his foot in that tie, and Ryan Essen back in goal side of Jamie Langfield. One change for the visitors, Edgar Jankowskis back from suspension, pushing Callum Elliott to the bench. This, of course, the first outing for Graham Ricks as Hart's head coach. Referee Craig Thompson, commentary Jock Brown with Mark Hatley. Hearts get it in the way. It's a very important match. And Hearts facing an Aberdeen team right out of form as far as playing Hearts has been seen in recent times. There's Jankowskis against Xander Diamond. That'll be a very tough contest. And there's the first foul of the match. The Hearts have this set piece to exploit. Scatchel and Hartley over the ball. Hartley plates it in. Uh, watch very carefully there by Ryan S. That just needed a touch, that one. There's Richie Byrne to his former and permanent teammate, Barry Nicholson. The shot by Crawford, completing the set of the Perlman ex-players on the side. Good play by Hartley. That's for Jankowskis, promising. Well, perhaps would have been better for him to pull that back. throw in here's Crawford Smith's cross pulled back straight to Webster that's Mackey with a miscue here comes Bunn Richie Bunn you head outside him that's promising Crawford couldn't get there that's Smith brilliantly finished by Jamie Smith that's what that boy gives you right sided player eager to get involved in the box saw the build up Got himself in there, and that's a clinical finish. Didn't panic. Scatchel again angling the ball in. It's well won by Anderson. Michael Yunus playing it down towards Jankowskis. Oh, Jankowskis is brought back in, but Scatchel at the end. An excellent save from Essen. The skipper almost letting his team down there. That's excellent play. Very two-footed Michael Yunus, as you can tell there. There's Nielsen. Jankowski has done well, and so too did Barry Nicholson with an excellent tackle. Careless one by Jankowskis. Muirhead finds Nicholson with a shooting chance. Fine effort by Nicholson. They haven't been in this part of the field too much in the last 10, 15 minutes or so, but this is promising. Stevie Crawford, the wrestling match in the middle. There's Nicholson nodding it down, headed away there by Presley as far as Smith. There's Smith again! Hart's coming forward again, though, that's played it back by Callum Elliott, who's on the side. And there's a chance for Skatchel! Great goalkeeping by Essen! That's in! Deflected in! Rudy Scatcha will claim that! Hearts are back on level terms! Essen had no chance! It's well won by Anderson. There's a shot, chance! Oh, Scatchel again! There's Presley! Great save by Essen from Scatchel! Dangerous situation. Oh, almost in on its own there. Webster and Anderson clashed inside the area. A little yeah. bit of unpleasantness there. Oh, Got away very safely by Presley. 
Chesnowskis towards Hartley. Ooh, just enough on the ball by Anderson. But this is Skatchel, a chance for Hart. Chesnowskis, great defending by Chris Clark. Poor first touch from Chesnowskis there. And it is, in fact, a draw in the end for Graham Ricks. He's learned very quickly how tough the Scottish game can be. And it ends Aberdeen 1, Hearts 1. You know, I just to him in there, you know, it was, a, it was a great performance against a good team. A team with a lot of confidence, which you've not got at the moment. And, uh, you know, if we play like that, uh, they'll win, they'll win more games than we'll lose. I suppose it was always going to be difficult for the guys. My first game, all the media hype going with it. Uh, and we said a few words at half-time and they responded, which pleases me. And I think there's... In the end, we could have gone. Good start for Aberdeen yesterday. Jamie Smith's been fantastic since he went there, Andy. Yeah, I think he has, Andy. I was impressed with Aberdeen in the first half. I think they made it a very physical game. They matched hearts uh, all over the pitch. And great to see uh, the composure here shown by Jamie Smith. Didn't lash out at it at all. Got a bit of power in it with the side of the foot, but right into the corner. Wonderful finish. Jack Falkirk with the first team this season to take points from Hearts, uh, but you know they always bounce back, don't they? Yeah, they do. I mean, when we played them, obviously, we had a 2 0 lead um, and they were down to 10 men, and they still managed to come back and snatch a point from us. Really strong, powerful side, and, and they carry a big threat, especially at set pieces. Um, and I still think that they'll be there earlier about coming into the season. Slightly fortuitous with the equaliser, Andy. Yeah, I think they were. I mean, Scatchel had a number of chances during the game. I think he was obviously due a goal. He, again, you know, showing his value to Hearts, getting a goal from midfield. Just wonder whether the keeper might have done a bit better. He did get a hand to mm. it, but couldn't keep it out. But I don't think you were ever going to deny Scatchel. Had he not scored that one, I think Hearts had enough in them at the time just to step it up a gear, and they were the dominant side in the second half. And the new coach, Rex, will be just happy to get that one out of the way. Yeah, get it out of the way, and uh, he's got a game under his belt now. Uh, the players, I think he's happy that they responded to his chat at half-time. But uh, they're certainly in the, the hunt. I know they've fallen a couple of points behind Celtic, but uh, you know there's certainly enough quality there to keep that challenge going. Ottawa have decided to go with the man who drew one each last week at Tanadise which means uh, Scott McDonald will again try to prove he can be as much a nuisance to that harsh defence as he was early in the season at Tancastle and continue to catch the eye of Scotland manager Walter Smith, who might yet decide to ask him to play his international football for Scotland. I think the most interesting aspect of the hard side are the absentees. The regular John Cockers is injured. Hospicil isn't even in the squad at all. Roman Bednar is on the bench and hasn't played since the Rangers match. And in comes John Calamelli and Jamie McAllister, which means, in effect, Hearts have only one acknowledged striker in the side. Fir Park has hardly been a happy hunting ground for Hearts in recent times. They haven't won here for three years. And, of course, Audible won three out of the four league games and knocked them out of the League Cup. So there's a lot to be made up. And, of course, a new era for Hearts. And it's going to be interesting to see how they fare without three acknowledged strikers in the side today. Continuity is all important to win a league title. And that's what they've got to try to prove. Showing that they could fight back as they did at Petrodri last week. That's a very interesting ball there. Gordon tries to get in there and hooked away. But Jim Hamilton tried to come in. And it goes. The big men were up, and here's the break. McDonald is going forward, but it doesn't go to McDonald from McCormack. There is McDonald now in behind Nielsen. He's got to play quickly. He doesn't. He's going for the shot. And there's Craig Gordon, and that is uncharacteristic. A little fumble by the Hearts goalkeeper there. Great break by McCormack initially from midfield. There's Hamilton again from the corner. That is very unlike Craig Gordon. He has a wonderful pair of hands, but twice now hasn't got that initial solid contact. Pieces to take this. Oh, 
And the goalkeeper taken late there, yes. Elliott coming in. Trying to get to Hamilton again. That was surely a push. carefully at this ball the screaming from the touchline at them there's Hamilton and it's in Brian McLean the former Rangers player who was debarred from playing at Ibrox in the recent game pops up there to put Motherwell deservedly in the lead Hartley is lying very deep the big man at full forward, his schedule in that dangerous position, appeals for a penalty, and the referee is going to book schedule for a deliberate dive. The heart supporters behind that goal are incensed. The two players go for it. Down goes schedule, and the referee considered that that was artifice. Boot. Hartley picks it up. No offside. Bednar. It's a decent ball, and that's great effort by Scatchel again. Dragon. Bednar. Jesus. Good ball across. No penalty. Nielsen going down in the box. Appealing he was blocked. Picked up by McAllister. Hart supporters urging the side on now. Went into the 90th minute. There's an appeal for the penalty. It is. The charge into the box there. Andy Webster going in. Danny went. Penalty. And we're into added on time. What a vital one this is. Hard to be equalized. Paul Hartley, the scorer. They fought long and hard to get that. And Motherwell really must be anguished. They're a good bunch of lads. We just need to keep working at them. They've got to give them, you know, they've got to have the belief that they can go and win games and kill games off like this. But, you know, we're just delighted that um, it's another point, you know, against, against a, a team that's, you know, um, a very good team as well. So, you know, in the end, perhaps I'm demanding perfection, but I demanded that for myself as a player and never quite got it, but uh, <laughs> let's see. I, I just think the fact that was scored in the last minute just shows what great spirit there is amongst the boys and the I mean it wasn't great first half I'll be the first to admit that but I do have to say that you know people have to understand that we have to play with the personnel that are available. Referee Ian Brains had a tough job on Saturday primarily because both sets of players were determined to make life difficult for him. Takis Fisa shows his displeasure here from nothing more than an Alan McCormick challenge. And Ian Brines has to take the time to try and calm him down, as well as Stephen Presley. Scott McDonald then threw himself to the ground looking for a penalty after making contact with Julian Brellier. The referee ignored it. Schedule here is clearly fouled by Martin Corrigan, but with the multiple players thinking he's at it, the ref again has a tough job keeping a lid in what is always a needle match. Rudy Scatchel was at the heart of most of Motherwell complaints. Here he makes a meal of a Sean Fagan challenge and seconds later is booked for diving. Harshly in my view, I thought this was a penalty. The game itself was low on quality because the passing was awful. Nielsen, Alan McCormick here couldn't find their men. 
And then Paul Hartley's misplaced pass puts Rudy Scatch on his backside. More evidence of misplaced passing can be seen here with an Andy Webster clearing straight to Sean Fagan. But Fagan returns the compliment and gives it straight back to him. Late in the game, Jamie McAllister and Sean Fagan get into yet another tangle. But again, there's nothing in it and the ref waves play on. Here's another look at the penalty incident that led to Hearts getting a point. No doubt in my mind, Ian Brown's got it right. It's a clear penalty, but the Motherwell players can't believe it. But this was a day when the ref couldn't possibly get everything right. Archie, uh, I think we've established Hearts weren't at their best on Saturday, but still a vital point for them. Yeah, Andy said it all. There's very little I can add. Um, it was a disappointing game. They stuck in, as uh, the manager said. Uh, they didn't play particularly well in the first half. The mystery for me was Motherwell disappearing in the second half. Uh, the midfield, which had played uh, particularly well, uh, just simply became anonymous, uh, not to say transparent. And every ball that came out of the Motherwell defence landed at a heart's foot, especially in the last 20 minutes. And that meant there was almost remorseless attacking. Without them actually threatening the goalkeeper, the Motherwell goalkeeper didn't have all that many great saves. He cut out a few balls. Uh, but apart from that, um, it's the fourth time this season that Motherwell have lost a goal in the last couple of minutes. Mm. And the last one, of course, was Chris Boyd, um, the fifth part for uh, Kilmarnock. So that's, that's an anguishing time. And Terry was being very kind and benevolent and uh, avuncular with his lads there at the, at the end with his comments. Uh, but they have themselves to blame for lying very deep in defence. Craig, Motherwell took the game to Hearts, even though Hearts were lying uh, deep, and they had chances before they scored, didn't they? Yeah, they played a lot better in the first half. They played a lot of good stuff for Motherwell and probably just shaded the first 45. And Jim Hamilton and Scott McDonald, great partnership, the big guy, the small lad, you know, short, short. Doogie aren't it like, and a lot of people compare him to Doogie, you know, low centre of gravity, very difficult to deal with. And uh, Jim Hamilton knows where to get in the box at the right time. And at that point, I thought Motherwell were doing great. What a clever free kick this was. Terry Butcher was actually out in the dugout shouting at Jim Hamilton to go down that side and he got his reward and big Brian McLean scored his first goal for the club and uh, unfortunately the end wasn't quite as good for Brian McLean but he had a really good 90 minutes alongside Stephen Cragen. It wasn't but we've seen Hearts go behind this season Andy and they show great character don't they? Yeah I think you have to credit them for, for coming back. They've now got a couple of home matches which obviously they'll be looking to, to build up a few points so they've came through a sticky phase but I'm sure Graham Rex is absolutely desperate to get that first win get the fans on side. He wouldn't want that type of run to continue any further. Julian being very cheeky about you, about your penalty opinions, uh, no yeah. doubt that this was a penalty for Hearts. Absolutely no doubt in my mind. There's been a number of this weekend that have been missed and uh, it was a clear penalty. I think it was desperate from uh, Ryan McLean to just to try and hack this ball away. They were under the cosh and uh, you know what? I thought it was a decent claim even earlier mm -hmm. from uh, Rudy Scatcho and Robbie Nielsen. And Craig, when he took the penalty, it was a corker, wasn't it? That's oh, absolutely magnificent. You're 90 minutes into the game, you need a bit of bottle, and Paul Hartley come up with the goods. But I'm um, humourless referees, I'm sorry, but why do you book a player for celebrating in front of his own fans? I can't understand that. The opposition fans can cause trouble. To run to your own fans and celebrate, that's surely not a problem. This uh, is entertainment. Archie, your early thoughts on the Graham Ricks regime? Difficult for him because of the off-field uh, opinions that have been expressed, and apparently no legally, as I don't know whether it's legally, quasi-legally expressed by the SFA. You know, having an examination of his character and so on. So it's going to be very difficult for him to settle. But people within the game who know him respect him for his footballing and coaching abilities. And uh, at the end of the day, despite the controversy, that's all that uh, really matters to the heart support. <laughs>
It's been thumbs up for Hearts for most of the season so far. But as they pushed forward and played in Rudy Scatchell, it was more a case of hands up in the Livy defence as they backed off the check and opened up the opportunity for him to have a goal. A fabulous strike by Scatchell, but it was one he was allowed to make as Harold Pinkston backed off him. Roy left with no chance. Eight minutes gone and already it was looking like a long afternoon ahead for Livy with Hearts playing with all the confidence in the world. Scatchell back to scoring form, something underlined seven minutes after his first goal. More great skills from the golden left foot, 13 for the season for Scatchell and even after 15 minutes, Livy looked marooned. Another goal would certainly have killed him off and another goal almost came courtesy of Michelinus and Elliott. Roy with a fine double save to break the hearts. But if you thought there was nothing Livingston could do to change things, Paul Douglas had other ideas. The message from the gaffer was clear, a bit of thought required rather than strong arm tactics. That came in the stroke of half time and left Alan Freeland with a bit of sorting out to do. It ended with a couple of yellow cards. Tank Castle has been Hearts Castle this season, not only unbeaten but the only team in Scotland to have won all their home games so far. Only two goals conceded in seven matches before this one and they might have added to their goals for tally several times. Roman Bednar dragging his shot wide. Livy were living on crumbs for the most part but now and again a sizeable chunk fell their way. For Paul Douglas there was enough to merit having a go. And if there wasn't the power required of the shots to beat Craig Gordon, the Scotland goalkeeper was taking no chances. Paul Lambert, you feel less influential on the sidelines than when he's in the team and able only to watch as Hearts carved a path through the defence once more. By now, Callum Elliott must have been wondering how many chances he would miss. At least he was in the position to miss them. Despite any improvements there might have been for Livy, the fact remained they had scored just eight league goals before this game, so how welcome was number nine rattled in by Alan Walker. A lifeline perhaps for Livingston coming from a fine effort from Walker, one that left Gordon clutching mid-air. Despite the goal, the lines were soon to be stopped again and with Bednar ready to pounce as the defences were breached. And the killer instinct required next time. Hearts, to be fair, were by now smelling blood again and were looking to make the kill. Again, they turned defence into attack with alarming speed and this time the substitute to Mikel Pospisil almost made it count. You really can't come much closer and not score. But if Ludovic Roy was beaten here, Gordon was happy to allow the ball to beat him at the other end. A sure knowledge of the rules shown by the keeper who didn't dare touch the ball in case he conceded a goal. As we all know, as we all should know, you can't score direct from a throw-in. Gordon pulled his hand back from the ball to avoid conceding an own goal. A cool head and clear thinking at the back. A cool head also required in front of goal as Paul Hartley knows only too well. Sometimes luck takes a turn. The win enough to keep Hart still up there with Celtic. Hugh, if you remember the build-up to that Hearts-Rangers match earlier in the season, it looks as if the build-up to this Hearts-Celtic game on New Year's Day is going to be phenomenal. I think that's quite right too. If Celtic beat Hibs at the weekend, then it's a two-horse race for the Championship. Celtic and Hearts. Therefore, with Hearts to go to Ibrox on the 17th of December, the game on the 1st of January at Tynecastle is going to be a classic. Especially, Andy, if Rudy Scatchell keeps banging in the goals. Yeah, for my money, he's been the most dominant midfield player of, of this season. I think he's been terrific value for money. There must be a worry from uh, the Hearts fans that he could be snapped up. He's still contracted to Marseille. So if anyone comes in and offers money, then Marseille might just uh, take it. But uh, he's shown there, not for the first time, how deadly he can be on that left side. And uh, I think when you compare the qualities of Celtic and Hearts, I think Hearts are pretty sound defensively, pretty strong there. Midfield are terrific, not only Scatchel, they've got Hartley as well. They don't have a natural goal scorer, in my view. I think Jankowskis is a terrific player, but he doesn't score enough goals. Bednar's been out injured, and Pospisil's in and out. Callum Elliott is in and out. Mm -hmm. So if they could get a goal scorer, 
that would certainly help prolong their challenge. The game should have been dead and buried at that point, Hugh. I mean, Hearts missed numerous chances and then suddenly Livingston back into it. Well, the score at the end, Jim, is just a, a false one. You know, it's 2-1 going on 7-1. But uh, all credit to Livingston. They do fight. Walker's goal is an excellent one. And uh, then they, they have that moment at the end where Craig Gordon has the sense to take his hand out of the way. But uh, well done to Alan Walker. It's a fine strike. And you don't beat a goalkeeper like Craig Gordon from that distance easily. And Andy, uh, Murray Fowler has emailed in to say this is a great piece of goalkeeping by Craig Gordon. Well, I'm not convinced that he left it. I think the bounce had beaten him. And uh, it was a strange one. When you see all those bodies, not one person getting a touch on it. Certainly if they did, it's, it's inconclusive. And I think the referee quite rightly ruling it out. Hugh, just going back to something Andy said a minute ago, Rudy Scatchell, it is surely inconceivable that Hearts could lose him in January. But of course they could. Yeah, of course. And that they are hostages to fate where he is concerned. So there's no point in debating whether or not he's staying or going. The hearts will need to wait and see. What you can say about Rudy Scatchel, he's moving into player of the year territory. Mm. You've got Scatchel, Stylian Petrov at Celtic, Chris Boyd at Kilmarnock because of the phenomenal number of goals he scored, and Derek Ryden at Hibs, so long as you keep him away from karaoke machines. Indeed, uh, there's one man who can buy Scatchel, that's Mr Romanov. We'll see. What if the Hearts fans woke up to find their recent good run was, in fact, just a dream? Already, top of the league is just a memory for those supporters who watched as a nightmare start almost unfolded in front of them as Craig Dargo and David Proctor came close to giving Cali the lead. They were working just as hard on the benches, trying to get their view across, but the message is coming over loud and clear that Hearts are not what they were a few weeks ago. That's something for Graham Ricks to sort out, and he'll have to do so quickly before other teams see through the veneer of invincibility the Edinburgh side has constructed around them this season. This would have been seen as a game Hearts should win, even more so considering it was at home. But Mark Brown was barely troubled by the volley by Stephen Simmons. An agonising watch for the head coach, who had more to worry him than his own side's missed chances, because Cali were proving a handful for the Hearts' defence, with Dargo particularly sprightly. And from his layoff, Brewster should have given his side the lead. Between them, Brewster and Craig Gordon demonstrating contrasting frustrations. It seems these days if Paul Hartley or Rudy Scatchel don't score, Hearts don't score. The pair have accounted for six of their last seven goals, although Ross Topley almost got his name in the score sheet. Confident defending, and they might have added a few grey hairs to the manager's head, but it was effective. Second half, and Topley involved again, this time with less certainty. A clearing header that might have proved more dangerous than it turned out. Hart's reputation certainly goes before them now, with other teams working hard to make life difficult for them, so when the space opened up for Chesnowskis, the finishing just had to be better. The sense of anticipation deflated among home supporters, who are used to seeing their side take the lead in matches. Craig Brewster is 39 tomorrow, but there's no sign yet that he's beginning to slow down. He was here at the start of this move, and after Dargo held off the challenge of Robbie Nielsen, the player manager was there at the end and almost supplied a finish. Still, you have to go back to September the 10th for his last goal for the club, when he hit a rich vein of form. Hearts are hoping to get back to form, and although they found it hard to create too many clear-cut chances, Mark Brown almost gave them a way in. His challenge and Callum Elliott had the home fans screaming for a penalty and the referee shaking his head. No real contact, Callum Murray called that one correctly. Without the services of Roman Bednar and Edgar Jankowskis only now getting back to fitness, there is a threadbare look to the Hearts squad, a fact that was often dismissed when spoken of by George Burley. So there was a touch of straw clutching at even a hint of getting close to a goal, says Nauskas almost by accident catching Brown by surprise. Stephen Presley, so often the hero for Hearts, almost turned a trick again for them. And she's in it for the skipper, who so often leads by inspiration. And inspiration wasn't in short supply for the visitors either. Supplied this time by Ian Black. He came as close as anyone to opening the scoring. Gordon's heroics important. The last line in a tight hearts defence that has been recognised at international level. It's been the rock on which they have built their early season success. And it was certainly put to the test here. 
the old man once again bringing out the best in the hearts keeper. There's no doubt Hearts might have lost this game and with it their unbeaten home record. Watch carefully as Kelly number two Ross Tokley beats the offside before beating Gordon, only to be brought back by an offside flag. McCaffrey's neat flake, it was Dargo who was offside. Kelly, unfortunate. Hearts carry their luck to the end with Cali fans off their seats again this time looking for a penalty as the ball came off the arm of Nielsen ball to arm was the decision of the referee and a huge let off for the home side there might have been no let off if Brewster had found his shooting boots but the warning signs are there for Graham Ricks and his men that nothing can be taken for granted nothing has been won yet they chose Celtic by three points and will have to rediscover form for Ibrox next week Lee Robertson agrees with that. Uh, his email to say, Graham Ricks better get his act together for next week's trip to Ibrox. Shocking display on Saturday. John Hutchison, I'm a Celtic fan, but I've been impressed by Inverness boss Craig Brewster. He's guided his team through some very tough matches and, of course, Celtic up there next Sunday. Andy, Inverness's goal, which was chalked off, he was onside. Oh, he was clearly onside. He was onside by a good two or three yards. He doesn't make much of a meal of it. But I think Dargo is certainly the man in an offside position, but he's not involved in the move at all. You see here the lovely fit, yeah. flick from McCaffrey, and uh, Ross Togley is, what, about two yards onside? He, he runs, you watch it there, he runs past Robbie Nielsen. Yeah. He's there, the ball gets flicked there, he runs past Robbie Nielsen. It makes no difference where Dargo is. Absolutely nothing to do with that, and that's a dreadful decision. Well, they were robbed there, and Andy, near the end, they had a penalty claim as well. What did you make of this one, Robbie Nielsen handball? Yeah, could easily have been given. Maybe at the other end it might have been, although, in, in all fairness, I thought Hart should have had a penalty when uh, Mark, Drew, uh, Mark Brown brought down uh, <coughs> Callum Elliott, I think it was. So uh, a lot of poor refereeing decisions over the weekend. Well, uh, Hearts really bossed Rangers at Tynecastle earlier in the season, Bill. Now they have to go to Ibrox and basically do the same again to keep tabs with Celtic. Yeah, and where they got the best of most teams earlier on in the season was the speed of their play. Starting for the goalkeeper, getting it wide, running at teams. One of them is, I think, a mistake Graham Rick is making. I think he slowed their play down a bit. Maybe try to get them a bit more patient. And it's not their game because you have to release guys like Scatchel. Also against Rangers last time, you had Bednar, although he was injured earlier in the game, and Jankowskis. So you could put the ball across and put defenders under pressure. I'm not quite sure where the goals are coming from next week, but they have to win. We shall see. In the honeymoon period, Graham Ricks might have allowed himself. Surely came shuddering to a halt before this one with just one win in five going into the game. So, something to prove for the Hearts players as well as an element of revenge against Falkirk. The home side looked more like themselves as Paul Hartley inspired an early effort that stretched Matt Glennon to the limit. Falkirk, we know, can be clever on the ball, orchestrated mainly by Latipi, and they were helped by less than impressive defending that might have shaken Graham Ricks as Daryl Duffy almost took advantage. It was only by the legs of Craig Gordon and good fortune that the home goal remained intact. Sensing an anti-Falkirk bias, John Hughes had spotters in the stands scrutinising the performance of referee Stuart Dougal. Those spotters might have concluded that Stephen O'Donnell deserved a yellow card for his late challenge. And the yellow card is exactly what he received. If Hearts have in the main failed to find top gear since Ricks arrived, they were revving up nicely. Hartley and Rudy Scatchel moving smoothly up the gears. Glennon well beaten by the shot and unhappy at the space given to Hearts' top goalscorer. The Edinburgh club had failed to find the net in just three league games all season, two of them coming in the last two games. So if that constituted any kind of mini-crisis, they set about changing that particular statistic and were successful when Paul Hartley got back to scoring form. Hartley well placed to take advantage when the ball came back off Glennon. Hearts ahead to the delight of their supporters, probably to the delight of Vladimir Romanov as well, although given his comments in the match programme, it would be a hard job to read the mind of the Hearts owner. He didn't need to be a mind reader to see a red card coming for O'Donnell after a challenge worthy of a yellow card at least. 
A second yellow, an inevitable red for the Falkirk man, and his side up against it now. Mr Romanov decried those who he feels seek to ruin football, from agents to him, journalists and jealous hangers-on. He claims he had been driven by the devil and is looking for beautiful football and new amazing victories in 2006. The increasingly intricate celebrations suggest he need look no further than Scatchell at the tail end of 2005. This a stunning goal, the earlier miss, merely the setting of sights. So two down and with ten men, the situation not a promising one for the visitors who had recorded just one win in their last seven games. If it looked hopeless for them, they did at least continue to try and come forward, with Latipi's through ball deserving of a better fate. Cool marks to Craig Gordon for closing it down. And anyone who doesn't believe Hearts are getting back to the kind of form they showed under George Burley need only keep watching. Defence turned into attack and defensive mistake pounced upon and punished by Callum Elliott. Merry Christmas all right for Hearts and for Elliott who celebrated his first goal for the club. It's a shocker for Andy Laurie. Elliott kept a cool head to stroke the ball home. Into the second half and Falkirk still trying to get forward. Between them, Alan Gow and Duffy worked the opportunity. Duffy inches away from reducing the deficit. However, 10-man Falkirk were fortunate not to lose another player after Daniel McBreen's late challenge on Physis. It was spotted by Stuart Dougal, who might well have been tempted to pull out a red card. It was yellow for the big Australian and a let-off for the visitors. However, it was one that did nothing to alter the situation and Hearts were looking for more goals. Michael Pospisil had been given a place on the bench after his reported ultimatum to Ricks to include him for this game. And while Falkirk managed to get the ball half cleared, they weren't out of danger completely. Robbie Nielsen hanging around the penalty area. He found Pospisil, who found a net, and now it was all over. More of this, and he might force his way into the team. To be fair to Falkirk, only in a 5-0 defeat by Motherwell have they been totally overpowered in their first season back in the top league. And although Pedro Matinho showed commendable skill and determination, this was really all about damage limitation for them now. Yogi looking stunned in the technical area. He'll have to treat this as just one of those days. The defending wasn't great, hearts were on fire, and to be honest, his team lost to an excellent performance from the only team that looks capable of challenging Celtic for the title. There's no doubt hearts will be in good heart for their meeting on Saturday. Only Glennon's fingertips stopped Pospisil, adding number five. Hearts kept going to the end, helped, it would appear, by more poor defending. Even when they had the chance to clear, Falkirk were unable to do so. And again they paid the penalty on a day Callum Elliott will remember for a long time. <laughs> Hearts fifth goal, a second for Elliott. He made this one look easy. Hearts made the three points look easy. This is the Hearts of earlier in the season. Celtic, be warned. Well, Hearts' Paul Hartley joins us here in the Scottsport SPL studio. That was a result you needed. Yeah, um, we've struggled over the last couple of weeks, but yesterday's performance was, was top draw, the way we've been playing earlier on in the season, so we're back to our best yesterday. We've read a lot about the players talking about what's gone wrong in the last few weeks. Did you actually put your finger on what it was? Just went back to basics, um, hard work, um, working as a team um, on the front foot, and we did that yesterday. You know, we, we've got good pace about our team. We look like we'll score goals, but we didn't do, seem to be doing that. You know, maybe four or five games, but yesterday everything just clicked into place. And it must have been difficult losing George Burley, and then you had an interim coach, then a new coach coming in. Yeah, it was difficult because um, you know we started the season that well. You know, the first two and a half months of the season un undefeated, but it's always difficult when the new manager comes in. He's trying to get his own ideas across, but you know, well, hopefully that's a uh, you know. We're building towards something. We know we've got a really difficult game on Sunday, but we're getting to that game with confidence now. At any point in the last few weeks, have doubts started to creep in that maybe things were going to go wrong? 
I don't think so. I think it's just a wee bit of confidence had went, um, but we, didn't, we hadn't lo- lost. We'd lost one in five games, but yesterday has given a lot of confidence going into Sunday's game, and you know we're getting to it with a good deal of hope. Well, let's show you the uh, five goals that Hart scored yesterday, and the first one for yourself, Paul, and just a fairly simple side foot on this occasion. Yeah, I think um, just I've laid it off to Rudy and he sort of struck a, a shot, and it's just ricocheted, and you know, I've just followed up and. and no, I can't miss it really. <laughs> <laughs> I dare say you could have, but Andy, that's 1 0 to Hearts. Uh, Falkirk then lose a player, but uh, Scatchel, a magnificent finish here. Yeah, just one of many this season. Terrific midfield player, and uh, my only doubt about Hearts is if Paul or Rudy Scatchel's not scoring, you wonder who is. I know Callum Elliott got a couple uh, on uh, 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 yesterday, but uh, they need a natural scorer. Something like that. A ball falling inside the six-yard box and there's a player there just to knock it over. And Paul, you were saying to me that's just what Elliot needed. Yeah, it is. He's been playing really well recently. He um, we just needed a goal and he's just took a, it was a, a ricochet and he's finished it, he's finished it well. But you know, I'm pleased for him. He's a, a terrific kid. He works really hard and he, he's, he's got a, a bright future ahead of him. Yeah, Pospisil scored the fourth one and Elliot scoring a lovely goal to finish it off, Andy. Yeah, great curling shot and uh, you know I think his game outside the box has been a lot better. But certainly scoring goals should give him the confidence he needs to, to bring it all together and make him look as though he could play there every week. Fraser, I know John Hughes was unhappy about the referee, but let's have a look at this double yellow card for Stephen O'Donnell. We, we've seen it a few times now and we can't see anything wrong with it. No, it's well, the we, decision I'm talking about. No, we, we criticised uh, Mr Thompson earlier on. I mean, that, that's, that's a lunge, it's a late tackle and I think you can see by O'Donnell's reaction here as he goes across to Stuart Dugley, he, he knows it's a bad tackle. He's quite happy with the yellow card and he's going for the ball, but he's late again there and I, and I don't think you can have any complaints uh, when you throw yourself into tackles like that. There's no onus on guys in the midfield and Falkirk because they have Latipi there. They've got to go and make tackles, but I, I thought two yellows was fair enough. Five goals and a clean sheet has set Graham Ricks and his men up nicely for a much-anticipated contest against Celtic on New Year's Day. Edgar Jankowskis doesn't score enough, but his presence is so important to the team as chess control and layoff brilliantly sends Chesnowskis to the byline here. And at other times, his one-touch control, strength and pass sets others up in attack. I must say, though, I'm surprised he's not scored more often. This type of chance is a snip for a man of his ability. For such a big man, he has plenty of skill on the floor and his turn on the halfway line here frustrates Kenny Millen to such an extent that he's booked for this lunge. Anyone prepared to go beyond him, as Chesnowskis is here, is likely to be found more often than not. Quick one-touch football will kill most teams and this rapid passing movement brings Hearts forward on the opposite side. At the other end, Hearts can be proud of their defensive record. There's not much you can do about the quality of passing from Russell Latipi, but Webster and Nielsen, then Webster and Craig Gordon, do enough to clear the danger. Look at Hearts' pressing game here. Scally is rushed into a pass by Hartley. Nielsen's on top of Latipi, and the result, a throw-in in the last third. With Presley, Webster and Gordon on the side, it's easy to dismiss the input of Robbie Nielsen's defensive qualities. He's always keen to get forward and help out in attack. But first and foremost, his job is to defend. And he does this with a bit of composure. Callum Elliott will take great confidence from his goals, but he lets himself down here after magnificent control, casually giving the ball away. And here he links up with Michael Pospisil, comes across the face, and once again, Hearts get the extra man on the opposite side. From Graham Ricks, more applause. Roll on New Year's Day. Roll on New Year's Day. Indeed, Paul, you remember we all built up the Rangers game at Tyne Castle earlier in the season quite a lot. Uh, this one's going to be even bigger, isn't it? Yeah, it's a massive game. Um, obviously, Celtic have got the, the gap uh, above us, but no, as, as I said, we, we get into the game with confidence and it's one we're really looking forward to, especially at a packed Tyne Castle. Great atmosphere and no, we're looking forward to it. Is it one you have to win? I don't think we can afford to lose it. You know, a draw would still be a good result, but I think we, we're going to try and go and win the game and, and close the gap to one point. Andy, it's going to be huge. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going through, and uh, Paul has assured me I'll get a, an excellent reception at Tynecastle. <laughs> as ever. As ever. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, hearts in goal-scoring form, and when you see the Celtic game uh, later on, Jim, you can see that they're not at their best defensively, so who knows, maybe a few goals at Tynecastle next week. Paul, predictions at the moment? We'll go and try and win the game, obviously. <laughs> you will. Well done. Thanks, guys.
Last week's cup defeat by Airdrie disguised a mini revival that had seen Dunferman pick up four points in two games. They had enough spirit about them to cause problems for the Hearts' defence as Andy Todd came close. Beyond the headlines, amid the pleas for replaying games and despite the claims that they're harshly dealt with by referees, the Hearts players have got on with the job and seem to have steadied themselves. Although you might not think so, looking at the problems Craig Gordon created for himself, Captain Marvel well placed to tidy up. However well Hearts seem to be doing, Graham Rex is still working on bringing in new faces in an effort to increase his options. Neil McCann, top of the list of course, and if the winger can return to his former club and supply crosses of this quality, the goals for Colum will surely benefit. Rudy Scatcho, twice denied. Nothing wrong with the technique, the defending, good enough to keep him out. But Hearts wouldn't be kept out for long, and while they'd struggle to pick up marks for artistic impression, the touch from Stephen Presley, all important. Presley might not be as dangerous as the Hearts strikers, but there's no denying his ability to pitch in with vital goals at vital times. There's so much more to his game, of course. His reputation as a defender is widely recognised. His skills as a winger, he keeps better hidden. Not any more. From his cross, Andy Webster might have made it too. Hearts on a mission, their determination to keep the pressure on Celtic at the top, greater than Dunfermline's to keep themselves out of trouble at the bottom. But despite loud shouts, Silius Michelinus wouldn't get the penalty he was looking for. To be honest, referee Craig Mackay called a difficult decision absolutely correct. Long-suffering Dunfermline fans would have to go back to September for the last time their side won at home in the league. And while a 1-0 deficit allows hopes of a comeback, Mikhail Pospisil ended home hopes of taking something from the game with a crisp first-time shot past McGregor. Back near Sagme from Pospisil a few weeks ago. He's not a regular, but a useful player to have around. The surging run from Robbie Nielsen helped set it up, and the keeper left with no chance. What chance now of Dunfermline taking something from the game? Well, a definite chance, actually, as he proved four minutes later. Mark Burchill juggling the ball between his feet before whipping the rug from under Gordon and his defence. A way back for the home side. Burchill in a run that's produced three goals in four games. Q storming fight back in one of those penalty area melees where the ball could end up anywhere. For Dunfermline, it ended up with the referee's whistle sounding before Greg Ross slammed the ball into the net. Disappointment for Dunfermline, a let-off for Hearts, but there was to be no let-off for the home side when Pospisil floated a header over McGregor to restore a two-goal lead for the Edinburgh side. They'll be wanting to start every week after this. It was a well-placed goal and one that cemented Hearts' position in the game and in the league. Winners now on the day and the chance to introduce their new signing, Narayas Barassa, to the wonders of Scottish football. The Lithuanian, I'm sure, will know he's part of something big happening at Hearts, and if he can play a part, who knows where it will lead. They're still in there at the sharp end, and with Julian Brelli in top form, Hearts were soon on the trail of a fourth goal. It came, perhaps inevitably, from Rudy Scatchell. The Golden Foot does it again, but it was the contribution of Brelli that made it possible. Scatchel left to supply the finishing touch. Party time now for the Hearts fans, who are cheering every pass, every feint and every flake. Hearts' ability to keep up and possibly catch up with Celtic will largely be determined by the change in personnel over the next couple of weeks. Their owner, Vladimir Romanov, seems determined to outdo Celtic in the paranoia and conspiracy stakes. I'm delighted. I thought we played really well. Uh, not an easy place to come to. And we knew it'd be a battle, but I thought, uh, especially second half, played some great stuff, and we're worthy winners. Archie has left the building. Graham Spears is here in his place. Graham, I spoke to uh, Graham Rex after the Hearts game last weekend against Kilmarnock in the Cup. 
The mobile never stopped ringing. He had agents on the phone offering him players, but I don't think anybody expected at that stage the name of Neil McCann to come up. I think he should probably be quite a decent signing. He's, what, 30, 31? Quite a good pedigree. Um, I think it probably indicates that Ricks is not overly trusting of his Lithuanian wide men. Uh, I don't know if McCann will get a get a regular game for Hearts. But, I mean, I'm delighted that r there are green shoots of recovery under Graham Ricks. Uh, they could have won a New Year's Day against Celtic. Um, they played well yesterday. That was quite a convincing win. I remember seeing him in the Ibrox press room two months ago when they played very poorly against Rangers. And Ricks, to me, looked like a condemned man. He really looked finished. I didn't think he was going to recover, given all the bad publicity and the poor performances of the team. But the team have definitely picked up. And I think if, he can, if these January signings can gel for him, he's got a good chance of taking hearts in a good run. And a good win for them at the weekend. Yeah, excellent one to score four goals away from home. I think it's uh, thoroughly convincing. But, uh, you know, I still think that uh, they need strengthening. And the biggest strength of all we need is a goal scorer up front. They need Pospisil to, to score more goals like this. And uh, if they can find someone, if they can get the service to him, and guys like him, Callum Elliott as well, then uh, they might just have a chance. Well, you mentioned Callum Elliott. Jankowskis, of course, is to come back. Yeah. And Neil McCann's been known to score a few goals in his time. Yeah, well, I don't really understand uh, the Neil McCann signing. I mean, I know he's a good player, but Scatchell, to me, has been the most outstanding midfield player in the SPL this season. So he plays uh, that sort of wide left role, scores great goals, gets up into the box... Uh, I would hope that it's not uh, sacrificing one for the other. But unless Graham Hart signs Scatchel before the end of January, Marseille could sell him. Well, the thing is, Scatchel is clearly enjoying himself because he wasn't getting a stage at Marseille. We know the talent he's got. It's the story that's written a hundred times of talented young players who can't get a game. And I can see why Scatchel is very much enjoying the Hearts experience, and I hope they do get him. With Jankowskis, and he's quite right, Jankowskis for, for 10 years has been known to be a, a, a fine player, but he's not a goal scorer. He's never been a poacher, so they need to find goals. The transfer market might be in full swing in Edinburgh, but none of the figures acquired by Hearts over the last week figures a day. And there's no Neil McCann from the side at Rugby Park uh, last Saturday. And Lee Johnson comes into midfield, but importantly for Hearts, top scorer Rudy Scatzo returns after suspension. And neither is uh, Tony Mulberry risking his new New Zealander striker, 24-year-old Chris Killen. He's on the bench for today's game. Stephen Glass is out from last week. Ivan Sproul is in to use that pace of his. And interestingly, God Marshall is his sub goalkeeper. Well, this game will be prep based by a minute's applause in memory of the late chairman of Hearts, Wallace Mercer. Very typical, tremendous atmosphere in Tynecastle. And the last time we saw these two teams playing here, Hart simply ran away with it. Scott Brown, who was immense last week. No free kick, referee waving play on. There is Brown that surely is a free kick. Drelly goes in very hard indeed and late. Uh, Scott Brown has been susceptible to injury and he was taken from the back. Brian in with it, there's a touch brilliantly saved. Great effort there by O'Connor. All he did was make the ball deviate. The very, very clever header indeed, just the gentlest of touches. Caldwell up and over. There's the ball played through. Connor has he got the pace for this? Takes better with him. There's no but the set. There's another great save. Ryder comes in. Beautiful football by Hibbs. Johnson. Ball played.
way through this. It's short and goal in Simon Brown. Right behind it. That's how dangerous this man's cancel can be when he gets into this position. It can be both feet for him. Ryden comes across to this side, taking the free kick from either wing. And there's a little touch, brilliantly said to get O'Connor twice in the game. Strong play by Elliott. Well played down the side that's actually can be dangerous here. It's in! That's seven thrust on that side. Both intelligently to pull the prices back in by Scantle there. And that's all it requires. The knockdown by Hartley. Hearts a one-up. this time hips have slightly lost the way I thought they played a lot of good intelligent football and that goal has set them back a bit like that for example but to just get a little more poise and composure to the game They're still in the match oh dear oh dear Stuart dreadful Elliot Elliot going in on his own Elliot it misses that is a kind of mistake that Hibs have been making all season. Well, that's a bit of a tragedy. Brown hasn't fully recovered from that knock you saw him take earlier in the game. And Omar Conde comes on. Hartley taking this with great care. It's a high one. Played back. That's your attempt. get there and the watch a red card Smith Thompson getting to it Vera making the mistake recovers very well though Scatchel just rushing the man aside there, Whitaker, still Scatchel going in, it's there! Callum Elliott, number four. Again, brilliant play by Scatchel. one there's a corner a lot of swill in that there's 
Liverpool couldn't get it away cleanly. Hartley, that's definitely a good ball. And as that was played across there, it was Webster flying in from the far side. Murphy. There's a run by Sproul. It's a good run as well. He's got the pace. Turns inside. He'll try a shot and go. Great effort there. Pip supporters on the feet trying to encourage the side now. Three goals behind though they are at this stage. And there goes the final whistle. You could say that Hearts with their positive display in that uh, first half would have knocked uh, the beat off any team. But Paul Hartley's opening goal set the scene for Hearts' supremacy. Final score, Hearts for Pavilion 1. You know, after last week's non-performance, it was important we bounced back. And uh, it was a massive game today. As everybody knows, massive Edinburgh derby, and uh, I thought we played great stuff, worked really hard, and, and deserved our victory. Well, Hearts' Jamie McAllister joins us here in the studio with Archie and Andy as well. Uh, Jamie, I got the impression all the Hearts players enjoyed that. Yeah, it was great to get the victory, uh, especially after last week when we got um, dis disappointing defeat against Kilmarnock. Um, but I thought Hibs started well, um, but our game plan was playing the 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one mm. to catch him on a break and have Paul and Rudy in that and break from deep and it worked um, got our goals at the right time and the first goal uh, a great example of uh, midfielders running from deep and uh, Paul getting at the near post in front of the defender What was the difference then between the match at Rugby Park which Archie and I were at and, and the game on Saturday? We just didn't start the way we usually start um, high tempo getting in people's faces um, and playing the way we like to play on the front foot. Archie, it was a totally different Hearts team from the one we witnessed seven days earlier. Indeed, there was one little cameo there which you saw at the end, the fourth goal, the way that Scatchell uh, took on Whittaker. I mean, he just brushed them aside. Uh, and I think it, it typifies the way Hearts play. Hearts don't play the full 90 minutes that way. They come in occasional surges. Mm -hmm. And when they come in a surge, it's effective. And if you're playing against a weak defence, and the Hibs defence has been weak not just in that game, but all season, then you're going to get results. And if you play the way they played, attacking very, very fast from midfield with Scatchell, self-evident, and you have the young lad up front who's bearing the brunt of the first through ball and holding up very well, Callum Elliott, mm. then you've got a chance against bad defending. Archie, for all the praise we're about to heap on hearts, Hib started this game very, very well. Yeah. Three great chances. Yeah. They play good football, but they can't defend. That is the... The, the contradiction uh, in this Hibs team at the moment, and I'm afraid it's a, it's a crucial distinction. And uh, if they play the, the way they, they play the football, as we saw here, brilliant effort there by Raven, we know about the rumours about him with Rangers uh, this very night, but um, there's no question they'll score goals. That was good goalkeeping. But it's the, the other end, that's a big point. That's yeah. the big failing. Great goal to get Hearts on the, on the way, Jamie. Yeah, it was. Um, I think Takis picks up in the left back and plays a nice ball through to Rudy. And uh, it's a wee bit over hit, but Rudy makes it a good ball, cuts it back, and Paul does well. Just peels off here and gets in front of Gary Smith and puts it in the back of the net. Yeah, Paul Hartley makes a lot of these runs, uh, Andy. Yeah, it was the timing of that run just to get across the defender for the first goal, and of course, Scatchel with the second. Undoubtedly, he's my player of the season so far, John. Well, uh, Scatchell involved here with the penalty and Jamie, I don't think there was much doubt, not too much protest from the Hibs players? No, I think it's a clear-cut penalty and uh, Rudy was tremendous for us on Saturday. He's great running with the ball at his feet and he makes defenders make the, the kind of tackles and uh, he's won as a penalty there. A fantastic finish from Paul Hartley for the penalty. Archie Hibbs going down to ten men. Again, it looks fairly clear-cut. Well, it was interesting. The Hibs, the heart supporters just below us, and there's Smith. It's, it's a, a, one of the comments on refereeing that that merits a red card. Of course it does. But there was a bad tackle. In my view, a, a very bad tackle mm. on Brown earlier on. The guy stays in the park. You know, it's one of these uh, inconsistencies in refereeing which badly affected Hibs. Jamie, it was always going to be a tough shift for Callum Elliott. He had one, what we might call a glaring miss in the first half, but he made up for it 4-0. 
Yeah, it was a good chance for him, um, but he made up for it in the end. But uh, he goes one on one here, and all he has to do is kind of put it either side of the keeper and hit the target. But um, it's a bad mistake there from Michael, and Callum's in, does well, gets past the defender. And then just a bit of composure there, to hit the target. But um, he was unlucky, but he was tremendous for us on Saturday. He certainly was, and so was this man, Rudy Scatchel, Andy. Yeah, he's just a star man for Hearts, absolutely outstanding. Left, going through the middle, creating chances as he does here for Elliot. And, of course, scoring goals. I mean, 15-16 from midfield, it's quite astonishing. And, actually, 4-0 down, Hibbs started playing some good football again. He did, because they are, I keep saying it, Jim, they're a good footballing team. But that element in the side, if they lost any of the front players, like Riordan, and we hear all the talk about that, I think they can compensate by doing something at the back because they've got very good players. They've got the likes of Fletcher who can play in that position. O'Connor, I mean, the, the, the back's full of intelligent and swift players from midfield right up to the front, but it's the central position at the back. We'll watch them give away stupid goals all season, and that happens. Me, first of all, um, could you be caught between two stools here, chasing Celtic or looking over your shoulder at Rangers? No, we are chasing Celtic, and that's where we're looking, looking to catch them. And it's down to eight points now, so it's um, very possible. And we just have to keep winning games, keep playing the way we did on Saturday, um, and concentrate on our own game. Archie, one of these new rounds of applause for Wallace Mercer before the match, instead of having a minute silence, they did fear that might be disrupted. Now, the Hibs players and the Hibs management in the dugout uh, didn't clap. Are you happy with that? Well, I was happy enough with it. I think it, they themselves were respectful. I, I didn't imagine for a minute, Jim, it was going to be a loving. Let's mm. not forget the history of this. Of course, there should be respect for a man who was a significant figure in Scottish football, but there was never going to be any amity uh, involved in that. And they were right to do the applause, and I don't make too much of the silence uh, of the players on the park. Well, Jamie, before we let you go, I take it you're now in full pursuit of Celtic. Yeah, we'll be chasing them all the way at the end and um, hopefully we keep playing the way we did on Saturday and um, hopefully it um, gets tighter. Now, uh, Julian, pulling your leg a little, Andy, I know you predicted a scoring draw. Yeah, but uh, I think you can't argue with that uh, result, 4-1, but I still think Hearts won't win the league. Celtic will drop more points, but so will Hearts, so will Hibs and so will Rangers. You can't win a title without a goal scorer. It's Celtic's league then, Andy? I think so. Thank you very much. Barely eight, the ball played forward now, edge of the penalty area. Still, Dundee United closing down quickly, but now the chance to get the ball into that penalty area, perhaps a chance to shoot, and it might still come. Here's Paul Hartley, he'll go himself, Hartley took a deflection. Really, when the ball's deflected that close to goal, it can go anywhere. Oh, header forward, was a good one, Archibald seemed to be all over the back of his man. Leon says the referee, and that's a good ball forward by Paul Hartley. And there could be something here for Hearts, and there should have been something for Hearts. Callum Elliott will wonder how he managed to miss that one. Fernandez comes short. Mulgrew still on the touchline, waiting for the return ball. Robson is there as well. Mulgrew will pick up. Now it's all about the quality of the cross from Mulgrew towards the far post, and that's the opening goal for Dundee United. Craig Gordon was left stranded as the ball came across and Grant Brebner at the far post nods Dundee United into a lead here at Tannadice. Shoot off, making life difficult and still making life difficult. And United just won't let Hart settle. Into the middle, now Fernandez with the opportunity for number two, and if ball went sit down for him, David Fernandez just couldn't get a clean strike. It's David McCracken trying to unsettle Craig Gordon as the corner comes in, and that should have been a second goal for United. And Colin Samuel came in at the far post, he seemed to have the goal at his mercy, and somehow managed to put it wide. Hearts now look to break quickly. The long ball over the top. Hasn't worked for them so far tonight, but Hartley gets in in the back of it. Now Paul Hartley, and we tried to lay it off, but he might have been better taking it himself. Stuart Duff down the line for Fernandez. 
And Duff is there. And I thought he was going to get the break of the ball, but he's happy enough to let it go out of play. It'll be a corner for United. So Robson swings in the corner. It was a good one too. Missed by everybody in the middle. A couple of the United players flung themselves at the ball, but it just didn't fall for them. And that is dangerous a corner as Hearts have faced all night. So Presley takes aim, edge of the penalty area. Hartley will have to go for this one. His flick on was good. Chesnowskis, is there a chance to shoot? There was indeed a chance to shoot, but the ball curling over the crossbar all the time. Long ball over the top. Fernandez. Oh, he tried one from an angle into the side net. Colin Samuel up with him, deciding to go himself. And that one rattling the side net of Craig Gordon's goals. Fieses will take the free kick. Oh, bodies falling in the penalty area. And that's going to be a penalty for Hearts. Well, Diggy McDonald pointing to the spot straight away. It looks like it was Stephen Presley who went down. Dickie McDonald had no hesitation in pointing to the spot. And so Hearts with a golden opportunity to get themselves back into this game. So it's Paul Hartley against Dilly, and Hartley wins the battle. And Paul Hartley delighted to put Hearts on level terms here at Tannadice. Stuart Duff. Sends in the free kick, it's hovering around. Hearts get their lines cleared. Mark Kerr is in there for United. Robson as well, past two defenders. There's a late challenge into the third, and problems here now. And the players grouping around Diggy McDonald, grouping around Barry Robson. And it was a bad challenge by Robson. It was late, and it's a red card for Barry Robson. And there's still trouble on the park here. Craig Gordon coming in as peacekeeper. Julian Brelli is involved there, and there's more work for Diggy McDonald. There's another red card. And it's now 10 men apiece. It looks like Brelli has been sent off as well. Short with the. Uh Layoff was Aguiar. Through for McDonald. Wide with Hamilton. Wide with Foran. Scott McDonald back off the post. Craig Gordon was a beaten goalkeeper. Just now skips through for Scatchel. Can Hearts get in front? Spilled by Meldrum. And Jankowska scores. So immediately play flows from one end to the other. Motherwell should have been ahead. Hearts are. Presley played into the feet of Elliott, stepped over it. Prodded away from Jankowskis by Cregan. On the left foot of Skatchel. Fierce drive. Parried by Colin Meldrum. Good touch from McBride. Well, it looked it, but it was well read by Elliott. And now Hearts on the counter. Chesnowskis. Skatchel heading into the area. And Jankowskis! Wow. What a strike. It was back heeled out of the Motherwell penalty box, which was always a dangerous decision, especially when it fell on the right foot of Jankowskis. And I think that's what you call unstoppable. Four and care. Good run into the box by McCormack. It falls for Jim Hamilton. What an opportunity that was. Mother will want to give themselves some hope of getting something from the match. 
Kerr's delivery, back off the crossbar, and taken by Craig Gordon, well, so close to making it 2-1. Jesus, Scatchel, Callum Elliott's in, and it's 3-0. Brilliant finishing from the teenager. He's having a great spell of goal-scoring form. Make that five goals in his last eight games. And he is difficult to shift from that hard strike force. Presley sprinting out of defence. That could be dangerous from Andy Webster with Stephen Presley up the pitch. McGarry shots, whistling wide. Well, there was loose play there from Webster to give it away with Presley charging forward. A late effort in the match from substitute McGarry right on the 90, but it was comfortably wide. I think he was a coacher and uh, you know, enjoy coaching, that, that's what I am. But uh, obviously, um, from speaking to Vladimir, he wanted someone um, to share the workload uh, from you know, the, the kind of peripheral uh, side of the, of the, the team. Uh, so Graham concentrates you know, pretty much mostly on all first team matters. I know the kind of development side and background stuff that I deal with, but I can deal with that, I feel enough, uh, feel, uh, in the afternoon or in the early evening. So I don't see that why. Uh, it doesn't mean I can't combine both. Uh, quite frankly, the heart supporters starved of success in the past would let the Edinburgh Town Council pick the team if they could get away <laughs> with it and get success. Mm -hmm. Who's calling the shots here? And can two people call the shots? Well, I think Mad Vlad is calling the shots in popular tabloid culture. But I think Jim Duffy's arrival is probably quite good for Graham Rooks. They work together at Chelsea. They work together at Portsmouth. They're mates. They respect each other as coaches. And the one thing Ricks needs in there is an ally and somebody he can trust. And also Jim Duffy, as we all know, is very good with the media. He's quite a good, calm, uh, affable guy. So I actually think the arrival of Duffy is good for Hearts. I think, Andy, you know, the, the, the very fact that are uh, hearts are determined to prove themselves shows the urge and the drive that came back after the, that disappointment against Aberdeen. Yeah, well, it's a, they've still got the makings of a great season, but they need to finish second. They need to certainly at least get to the cup final. They're favourites to win it. I think we would all like to see a, an Edinburgh final. But it's that second place which I think is the biggest prize of all. Rangers, obviously determined to get it. Hearts won eight-point lead. They've got to be favourites. And, and can score remarkable goals. I mean, mm. we saw some excellent goals in, in that game and it shows you the, the physical side of the game. That, that, that surge I was talking about. And, for example, through Jankowskis. Yeah. Well, Jankowskis, for me, Archie's always been a fascinating character in as much as he's been respected around Europe. He's played around Europe. But he's never been a goal scorer. But Motherwell could have scored there. Motherwell could have scored. Motherwell could have scored early on. Scott McDonald hit the post. We may not see that, but they could have scored there and they had the Scott McDonald incident. But Jankowskis, for me, in this game, scored two go good goals. He's never been a poacher. He's always been more of a technician. But he came back there and he got two goals on Saturday. Yes, I, I think also that they're getting a, a, a team select. They've sent players away to be specially trained. Yeah. Uh, but the team selection that they've got from the group of players you see there is obviously going to be very significant for them. Yeah, their strongest 11, I think, uh, can compete up at that level. Uh, we're now into the sharp end of the season, Archie, and mm -hmm. you, know, you, need a, you need a special strength, an inner strength, just to keep those results going. And with Rangers hot on their heels, I think it'll be an interesting last few months. Who, who are the special players for them at the moment, Graham? Well, Hartley has been a very special player, and Scatchel, <laughs> it's hard to look beyond Scatchel. He is another good example of a talented player who simply couldn't play football. Scatchel wanted to play football. How about that one, though? Scatchel well, couldn't have done any better. That's from Jankowskis, the man who has said has never been a poacher. He, he's, his second goal, as we just saw there, was, was excellent. But Scatchel's been a great player. Very good performance again.
Livingston gaffer John Robertson making five changes. Suspended pair Vinci and Tierney out, along with Roy, Pinkston and Hislop. In came Mackenzie, McNamee, Strong, Walker and Dorans. Two heart suspensions also in the form of Brelli and Hartley. Virus stricken skipper Presley also out. In came Berra, Petrus and Aguiar. Referee for this game, John Underhill. Commentary, Jock Brown with Mark Heatley. So, very good conditions overhead at the start of the match. It's Livingston to get us away. And we'll look very quickly to see how the formation settle down. Well, Scatchel turning that back to Pisas. Greg Strong there, winning that from Jankowskis. That's Richard Britton switched to the left-hand side of midfield this afternoon. Lovely first touch by the 18-year-old Graham Dorans. Fine play, setting up Moro for a shot at goal right at the start. Good play from Livingston. A great chance for Strong. Strong absolutely isolated. Dreadful defending, what a chance he had. Pisas will attempt a long throw also. Jankowski is the obvious target if he goes for the long one, but he changed his mind. There's a chance inside the area. It's not clear. Oh, it's another opportunity. It's a goal for Hart, scored by Bruno Aguiar. The ball comes in, he gets knocked down. A little scramble comes out. Aguiar in the perfect position, hammers the ball into Britain's foot, I think, and it bounces over Roddy McKenzie into the top corner. There we go. And that is the lot you get when you're at the bottom of the table. Here's Walker with a chance. Good goal given by Gordon. Well, oh, what a turn around in the match that could have been. Here's Pisas. Releasing it early towards Scatchel. Support comes to Aguiar. Now Petras. Lining up the shot. It's a good one. Fine strike by the Slovakian. So a free kick. Fired in there by Britain. It's a very good ball. And it's found its way home. And Livingston have an equaliser. That's a great delivery into that. Players are marked, Hearts very, very sloppy. Goalkeeper entrenched on his line. Webster to Fisas. Off for Mackay, caught very well. There's no offside here. Lawrence in the clear on the right. Needs support in the middle. Very strongly challenged by Berra. He's resisted that well. He's a chance there for Walker. Wonderful goalkeeping by Craig Gordon. He's rescued his team, they were badly exposed. <laughs> what a pass. Brilliant pass on Nielsen. And that is sensational play. Jankowskis with the goal. But that's down to Robbie Nielsen's initial pass to Chesnowskis. That's oh, fantastic play, that's the best piece of play we've seen from the Hearts team today. It's a question of whether he's ahead of Chesnowskis. Or, yeah, or is he level with No, he's all right, the yeah. ball, it wasn't ahead of the ball. Yeah, spot Not on the there. Is the ball. Yeah, spot on there. Here's Houlihan. Webster's headed out, a good one. Turned there by Adams. This is Moro. It reaches Mackay. That's a wonderful strike by Mackay. Livingston are back on terms. Scotland goalkeeper or not, absolutely no chance with that. What a strike. And what a reaction after going 2 1 down. There's a chance. Petras. Mackenzie's long ball, met by Berra, that's Adams challenging, he's pushing though into the back of Aguiar. Petras quickly away with that ball towards Bednar, Bednar through now, this could turn it, he's done it! 
Roman Bednar for Hearts. Surely the winner. What a first touch that is. Strength, composure, finish. Bang. Great touch, great strength. Shooting across the goalkeeper. Actually beats him at the near post. Oh, the final whistle goes. It's a relief for Graham Ricks. Dejection, I suspect, for John Robertson. It was in the end. Fantastic matchup, but unfortunately for us, Hearts have, have, have nicked it with a wee mistake at the end there. But um, if we can play like that in every game from now this season, we'll stay in this league. Jim Duffy, of course, with us here now. Eddie, you've got a question for your director of football. I'd just like to ask him what exactly does his role as director of football entail and does he think it's better than just having a single manager than, like, than having Graham Ricks as his partner? Cool. Jim? Well, uh, that was Julian with uh, Hearts Fan. What's the role, Jim? Uh, role is uh, a mixture of things, uh, Jim, really. Uh, the one thing that I do leave alone is the, the, the first team, really, in yeah. terms of selection and how they want to play. Uh, that's down to Graham, and I think that's the most important thing. I think that's the thing that's important to the fans. Uh, obviously, as a coach, he will ask my opinion. I will give him it. Sometimes I'll ignore it, but uh, I will give it. Uh, all the background stuff, really. You know, the contractual stuff, the youth development, um, pre-season. Uh, you know, kind of things like that. You know, in the background, and that allows him um, a very crucial stage of the season to concentrate fully on. On the first team. And the two of you looked pretty relieved at the end of that game yesterday. At one point, it looked as if it wasn't going your way. Yeah, I mean, uh, Livingston started very well. We expected that because, obviously, the new, new manager, and John Robertson, and he got his team fired up very early. But after the first 15 minutes, we started settling into the game. And then, uh, you know, we scored a bit of a fortuitous goal, but uh, it was good uh, backup play. I mean, uh, Bruno Agar has come in for Paul Hartley, really, and it was a, a kind of Paul Hartley type of run supporting the strikers and getting on the end of something. But, uh, you know, after that, we, again, a little bit of good fortune. Uh, one of those free kicks you see time and time again, getting bent in, no one gets a touch there, and, uh, you know, Livingston are back in. But the next two goals, I thought we scored were right. In fact, the next three goals in the game, but that was a great piece of football. Robin Nielsen, uh, David Ashenowskis, and then Jan Kauskas had a great finish. But uh, Dave Mackay was a player I had at Dundee for three years. I can't remember David ever hitting the ball as hard as it's ever. <laughs> you know, and then there it goes. I mean, a f fantastic strike. Uh, but fortunately for us, Martin Petras uh, showed a uh, good invention there. Took a quick free kick. And Roman Bednar, who's just back from a long-term injury, finished it with a, a, great piece of, uh, a great piece of skill at the end. And that managed to give us the three points. Well, Bill Leckie's joined us as well, of course, tonight. And Bill, that's a vital result for Hearts, given how far ahead Celtic had pulled on Saturday. Yeah, well, the, the, talk still, the talk is now, can Hearts hold on to second spot? Because you know, Celtic seem to be getting away. Um, and... You know, when other teams have got three points on the Saturday, it's very important for a team like Hearts on the Sunday, playing the Sunday, to, to get the three. And at and two each with a few minutes to go, it shows the fighting spirit. And John Robertson talked about the, the third goal for Hearts being a mistake. I think it's a great piece of play by Petras, putting the ball down at the free kick, playing it early, and Bednar does his job. And uh, relief, probably, I think, is the, is the word more than joy at the end of that game, because that's a vital, vital three points. Jim, an injury we think to Scatchel. Is he going to be OK for the Inverness match? I think he's a doubt for the Inverness match, uh, Jim. I mean, it's an ankle knock, but it's more bruising than ligament damage. And we don't think it'll be too long, but, it, but uh, Saturday might just come too quick for him. And Stephen Presley trained this, this morning. Is yeah. he OK? Yeah, Stephen's back uh, in again. He's back at his morning best today at training, <laughs> so we know he's feeling a lot. Hearts found their title hopes carried in the wind as they were blown off course on the Murray Firth. Difficult playing conditions for both sides, with Cali Thistle adapting better and Craig Gordon opening up an invitation for Russell Duncan to have a go. The Hearts keep her back quickly enough to recover. Hearts were looking for three points to keep up pressure on Celtic while hoping for a favour from City rivals Hibs the following day. So a degree of frustration for Takis Fisas when his header was clawed away by Mark Brown. It's been a tough baptism into management for Charlie Christie and the Cali boss could well do without his players gifting chances to the opposition. It was Brown to the rescue again to deny Roman Bednar and he let his teammates know exactly how he felt. 
Goals have been scarce between these two with just one scored in the previous two games this season. Callie Thistle's goal cause wasn't helped by the fact that Dennis Wynas had to be kept out of the side due to an agreement with Hearts. Hustling and hard work from Devidas Chesnauskas almost opened the door for the visitors, setting up the chance for last week's hero Roman Bednar, but the man who scored the winner against Livingston was unable to supply a finish this time. But he could supply a reason why the ball wasn't played wide to Chris Hackett. With three players called up to the Scotland Future squad, confidence is high at the Caledonian Stadium. It's certainly an indication they're doing something right at the club, and they seem to do everything right in the move that saw the ball teed up for Richie Hart. Confident goalkeeping from Craig Gordon. Hart seems to be improving every week. A run in the team has helped him get back to previous form, and had it not been for the reflexes of the Hearts keeper, he would surely have scored. The run complemented by the through ball. To be honest, he probably should have put it into the net. Credit to the keeper for the save. And what was becoming a nervy afternoon for Hearts. They weren't at their best in beating Livingston last week and not at their best here again. Craig Dargo allowed to elude two defenders and Hart had another close-up view of Gordon's skills. Once again, Hart in a goal-scoring position, beaten only by an on-form goalkeeper. Cali, without a win in the last four home games, were looking to give their supporters something. Although when Ross Tokley crossed for Graham Bain, the touch from the number nine was hardly enough to trouble Gordon. Hearts aren't the first and won't be the last side to find life difficult in the Highland capital. And there was more work for their defence as Bain was once more the target... There was more power in the header this time, but no direction. It's been a lean time for the striker, whose last goal came back in November. This was certainly no classic, but the kind of game where one goal might have won points that would mean so much to both sides. Hearts looking to consolidate second spot at least, while Cali have eyes on a top six place. And in these days of overprotected keepers, Kevin Toner allowed play to go on when Mark Brown was challenged by Bednar. The Cali players, you can be sure, would have complained a whole lot more had the ball ended up in the net. A challenge of a different kind left a sorry end to the afternoon for Hearts and for Jamie McAllister. Richie Hart winning the ball, but McAllister came off worse than the tackle, leaving it a day Hearts will want to forget. Well, after that, Andy, it's Super Sunday. We've got Hearts against Rangers at 12.30 and after that, the CIS Cup final at three, but Hearts Rangers first. Yeah, it's a mouth-watering game and I think it's big enough to say that if Hearts win it, I'm sure they'll go on and clinch that second place. But I think Hugh was right earlier when he mentioned that it was a test of Hearts metal. It is, because if they lose that, I can see Rangers taking the second place. A win apiece in previous league meetings this season. Home win, home win. And I think a home win coming up on Sunday as well. Uh, I believe that finishing second in the league and getting into the Champions League qualifiers is more important to Hearts than winning the Scottish Cup. It must be a huge incentive on their home ground. They can effectively kill off Rangers' challenge for second, Andy. Well, that's what Rangers were looking for. A wee slip up from Hearts. It's now down to six points. I think they feel as though with the games left, they can probably bounce uh, back from that. And it's that type of form, their European form, uh, which I think Rangers will be looking for. And if they put on that type of display... I can see Rangers winning there. And despite their huge pool and despite that horrendous wind up at Inverness at the weekend, they were missing four key players, Hugh. Yeah, you can't take Jankowskis and Rudy Skatchel out of the team with Brelli and Stephen Presley and not miss them. And I think all four will come back against Rangers. And so long as you have Craig Gordon in that kind of form and goal with home advantage, you must have a chance. Yeah, I mean, that's they, but they have such a big pool, Andy, that's the point. And yet they couldn't really cover for the loss of those four players. Yeah, well, I don't think it's down to any form at all. It's who wants it most. And as we mm. saw there with uh, Hibs and Celtic, I think the old firm tend to have this winning mentality when it really counts. I've been very impressed with Hearts this season, but their biggest test is undoubtedly... In Graham Ricks made four changes from last week's game at Inverness. Presley back for Berra and Jankowski, Skatchel and Brellier all back for Elliot Hackett and Aguera. Just the one change for Alex McLeish with Lovin Kranz in and Chris Boyd dropping to the bench. 
before all of the weekend matches, a minute's appreciation for the late Jimmy Johnston. The referee was Craig Thompson, commentary from Jock Brown with Mark Hately. So the men over the ball are Jankowskis and Brillier and Hearts get it in the way. And the opening exchanges will of course be very important in establishing just how the teams will settle. Well, the pattern will evolve. That's Kiriakos for the clearance. The big, two strong, powerful centre halves. That Perso would be wrestling up against them too. Not the quickest, so that neutralises itself out. Loving Crown's blistering pace. And if that's a weakness through the half side, that is it. Oh, good play by just those guys. Here's Hartley with a chance. Jankowskis, Hearts have the lead. Terrific play by Hearts. It got us, Jankowskis. Super, super play that. I'm just saying the ball was helped on very, very quick, but that man is delighted. throw from Nielsen and a bit of acrobatics there from Jankowskis it came off Rodriguez, he's not happy only one Rangers player out for the two men at the corner they'll take a short one, it's only two against one that's terrible defending by Rangers and very good goalkeeping by Vateros Possession more with Rangers. I'm quite surprised at that, I must say. 60 40. This was the same, uh, you know, the, the, the very patient on the ball, side to side movement, not giving the ball away. It's far more direct. This is Hutton. A little bit ambitious and hopeful, I think, from Alan Hutton. Good clearance by Gordon. Rodriguez heading that down on his father, Scatchel. Opportunity on the right for Chesnowskis. Beaten away well by Vatrus and helped in its way by Rodriguez to Ferguson who survives a handball. Claim. There's Buffal. Eased off the ball by Stephen Presley. Well, the, the message I think Hearts have really conveyed to Rangers this match so far, Mark, is they're prepared to take them on on any level, whether it be footballing terms, physical terms or whatever that's Burke and a chance for Buffal which he couldn't take just Burke there little nutmegs on Webster and a super ball across just a little bit too much pace on that ball there for Chris Burke for Thomas Buffal but great piece of skill there here's Hemdani Hutton again Burke from Chesnowskis over there on the far side Chris Boyd preparing for action as Ferguson is bundled over coming inside the breaks there for Buffel wonderful save by Gordon what? that could be a match winning save by the half goalkeeper blocked in the wall initially First touch, good shot, but a water reaction say that is. Craig Gordon not had a lot to do this afternoon. Watching the hour mark now, and Hart's looking really strong in the lead here. Next to Craig Gordon, this wonderful save, and that's stabbed away by Jankowskis. Still got a touch. Here's Boyd. Going wide for Ursula. Now Burke. That's for Buffel. He scored. The equaliser for Rangers. Well, we've seen that combination in the first half. Just didn't come off. And that combination again has got Rangers back into this game. They're very scrappy. Very few chances. Chris Burke just getting himself that yard, the space. And Thomas Buffel this time. Getting right on the end of that ball. It's a super ball. Craig Gordon, nothing with that whatsoever. Rangers have definitely got 
certainly uh, spiritual. That's Purcell with the head on. Another fine save by Gordon. Barkley with the corner kick for Hearts. Good challenge made by Presley. Well, Ian Murray stuck to his task. Boyd beaten comprehensively there by Presley. This is Chris Buck. Mika. Rangers equalising goal. There's Hemdani. Boyd to Buck. He's on side. Very good chance for Rangers. Spun by Buck. Ready again. Kiriakos. Over the top here for Genova. But Nielsen cuts it off. Here's Chris Buck. Plenty of Rangers plus forward here. That's good play by Burke. Can he deliver across though? Yes, he can. Here's Buffal. Very close. Good attempt by Buffal. Here's Elliott back to Pisas. Elliott's cross headed away strongly there. Turned by Nielsen. Fine effort by Robbie Nielsen. Fantastic. He's not a goal scorer by nature. Fantastic strike. Hatteras beat all hands down there. Both goalkeepers didn't have an awful lot to do, but um, when called upon, two of them were great, and uh, Gordon's saves were, were just of the exceptional class. I thought first half we did quite well. I thought we, we played well and deserved to go in 1 0 up. But, you know, Rangers, and you've got to give them credit, they're a good side. And, and they needed to win today more than we did, probably. Uh, but I thought we, we stuck in there, and I think overall a draw was. In a game littered with fouls, neither side was prepared to give an inch, and squabbling players typified the match. Paul Hartley provided a highlight for Hearts with his part in the opening goal. Timing his forward run to perfection to set up Jankowskis. But his game's not all about going forward. Occasionally, he's able to spot the danger behind him and make an important tackle. But Rangers certainly deserved a point. Barry Ferguson and Thomas Buffo showed a great understanding at times. Buffo, the ideal link man for Rangers to move the ball from middle to front. Ferguson looking for him all the time. They've developed a great understanding. And here they have a wonderful exchange of passes that almost creates an opening for the Rangers captain. For his goal, Buffo comes off the line and unlike a similar chance in the first half, he gambles on the ball reaching him at the back post and it pays off. Late in the game, Buffo, like Hartley, showed how determined he was to defend as well as attack. And his teammates will appreciate the work he puts in here. But it was such a stop-start game with so many fouls that neither side could get into any sort of rhythm at all. Dado Perso and Rudy Scatchel were both taken off, probably before they were sent off. There was a lot at stake and a financially rewarding Champions League place is still up for grabs. With their six-point gap intact, Roman Romanov's request for his staff to clinch a second-place finish is still in their own hands. Uh, Archie, we've heard Andy's views on the match there in Walker's Watch. Um, I thought Rangers had to win that game, but I've been speaking to Rangers fans today who still think they're going to overtake them. Well, they still do. It would be certainly wrong to throw in the towel uh, at this stage. I think the interesting thing about that game was a, a feature of, of Hearts, a very strong surging team, as I've said already on this programme. They don't keep it going for 90 minutes, though. Mm. There's always that lull of about 25 minutes in the second half when they seem to lose uh, a touch with the game. There's a lot of possession by their opponents, and uh, I think that's guy risky, to be perfectly honest with you. Well, Fraser, Jim Duffy, the Hearts director of football, said tonight, uh, maintaining intense levels of pressure for a full 90 minutes is a difficult request of any team. Is that fair? I think the way Hearts play, it's difficult to, to play at that tempo because they are a running team, as Archie says, you know, a surging team he uses. 
that phrase Hartley we saw for the goal that's his game he gets forward from midfield positions Rudy Scatchel is much the same as well and they, they played at high tempo they made it a really physical battle so it is difficult sometimes to keep that going for 90 minutes and it's always a problem Graham Mitts will need to address Andy it was a marvellous first goal that Hart scored and it illustrated the uh, intricacies of this new offside rule I must say I'm in favour of the rule, Jim. I think it helps uh, teams, any team, score goals. And any, any, any rule that helps goal scorers, I think, has to be applauded. I know there's an art to defending, but uh, I think the biggest thing there is to match the run of the attacking midfield player. Fraser, he's offside, and then he's onside. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with Andy in this case. You know, I mean, that, what can you do as a defender? I mean, when Andy was playing, he wouldn't have come out the D at the end of the 18 yard box. He'd never come <laughs> back. That's why he likes that rule. It is impossible to, to, to defend against that, you know, and uh, I think it has to be looked at. The officials were perfectly correct to interpret it that way, but I think FIFA have to have a look at that regulation. Well, Fraser, let's have a look at some excellent defending here from Rangers on the part of Julian mm. Rodriguez. This is a, a real chance for Jankowskis to put Hearts 2 up, but Rodriguez gets the foot in at exactly the right time. Yeah, he's been terrific since he came back from, from his injury. I thought he was playing very well just before he got the injury in November against Celtic and he began to settle down. And I think he's brought a composure to, to the Rangers back four that was missing over the, the, the months when he was out. And uh, since he's come back into the team, Rangers look stronger at the back. Would you agree with that, Archie? A Rangers defence much better with Rodriguez there? This was overlooked in Villarreal. I thought he was outstanding in Villarreal when they were under intense pressure from time to time in that game. He's an organiser, as uh, Fraser says there. He gives the impression that the other players are confident in him. And uh, that lack of confidence has been part of the, 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 the weakness of Rangers, the fragility of Rangers this season. Talking about defending, Andy, I mean, if you've got a goalkeeper like Craig Gordon behind you, you're going to be very confident, aren't you? Well, he made some outstanding saves, none better than the one from Thomas Buffo, where he catches it so well in the volley. And yet Craig Gordon is still alert enough and still strong enough to keep that out. That is just a top-class save, and he's... He's establishing a, a reputation as a top-class keeper. Marvellous uh, goalkeeping from him yesterday, Fraser. Yes, it was. He was beaten by this one. It was a Purcell's pass it was perfect for Thomas Buffo. So he bucked across for, for Buffo to finish well. But uh, he's a top-notch goalkeeper. Hearts will do well to keep him. I think you know he's got a year and a half perhaps left on his contract. This summer could be a key time, with, and uh, I think it's important for Hearts to, to get him wrapped up. It certainly could, Andy. But it was one-one at that stage. Um, I thought that was a fair result, but uh, Robbie Nielsen almost pulled the three points out of the fire for Hearts with a, a bit of a speculative shot, but worth, worth chancing. Yeah, I thought he had a decent game. I think, again, he's been another reason why Hearts have been <clears> so <throat> consistent this season. I think Presley and Webster got all the praise, but uh, he's decent going forward. I think he's been very consistent as a defender, but he had that effort, and I thought Rangers had a couple of efforts at goal as well, maybe one or two more than Hearts, but definitely a draw, a fair result. Whatever uncertainty there might be at Hearts, they hit it well in the opening stages with Rudy Scatchel bringing out the best of Mark Howard. The keeper on loan from Arsenal was impressive on his debut. So what to make of Hearts? This was their third meeting with Falkirk this season and they've had a different head coach each time. Mind you, Valdas Ivanouskis, the latest to keep the seat warm, would be all too aware that the eight-game run of wins ended here in October. Hearts came back from 2-0 that day and the header from Rodriguez almost had them looking to come from behind again. But this is football where all problems are solved by the sight of the ball in the net. The Hearts fans really won't care who sits in the ejector seat of the head coach as long as the team wins. Paul Hartley sent them on their way. The troubles of the whole week were partially swept aside in the pursuit and execution of a common goal to keep themselves in second place. They won few friends among the Falkirk support in a bad-tempered afternoon that produced eight bookings. It also produced a few chances like this one for Jan Kauskas. The new man settling into Graham Rixey's jacket and he probably couldn't believe what he was seeing. But Roman Bednar gave Falkirk a helping hand. Alan Freeland making it clear why he gave a penalty. Bednar trying to do Craig Gordon's job for him. Gordon, of course, signed a contract extension this week and he underlined his potential, keeping out Alan Gow at the first attempt. Gow reacted well to follow up for the equaliser. This was only Falkirk's second penalty of the season. The last one was scored by Darrell Duffy. Gow only just got away with it this time. 
those among Falkers 3,500 season ticket holders who don't travel haven't seen the side win in the SPL so far. Only Partick Thistle and Brecon have been beaten on this ground. Jean Lessinel took it upon himself to try and change the stats. Not for the want of trying. Falkirk have played well without getting the breaks and they felt they might have had another penalty. No goal this time from Mr Freeland. Julian Brellier sailing close to the wind. But for all their efforts, there was a familiar ring to the afternoon for the home side. In their attempt to win the match, they left themselves sparse at the back. And Hearts just decide to take advantage. Although when they did, luck played a major role as Jankowskis got the break to put them ahead. Not an awful lot the goalkeeper could do about this one and with nine minutes remaining Falkirk were again staring at a home defeat the challenge from Jack Ross wasn't a bad one Hearts got the break with just nine minutes remaining Falkirk weren't for giving up but we've seen how this movie ends plenty of times goals conceded, chances missed, no way back Yogi at least managed to stay calm, thankful no doubt that he's at Falkirk and not at Hearts. Also Latipi had to go himself to try and get it back for the home side, it wasn't to be. Cup semi-final up next for the Edinburgh side, you somehow feel that's just getting in the way of Vladimir Romanov's Champions League master plan. Is that something you have to adjust to, the way that uh, SPL matches are so competitive and physical? Is that a worry for you? Yes, this is not no, no worry for me and also for, for the players. We know this is hardest one, uh, one uh, respect for the, uh, every team in Scotland and it's OK. It is nice for players and uh, we know, we know since every game is, uh, I think, it's the same in Fiji. <laughs> First of all, Andy, Craig Gordon. Yes, I think that is good news for Hearts. Uh, I must say I'm a bit surprised. I thought he was on his way. But uh, I have to say that the Scottish players are disgusted by what has gone on at Hearts, not just in the last week, but this season. And the lack of respect that has been shown to George Burley, to Phil Anderton, to Jim Duffy, to Graham Ricks, it's not gone too, down too well with the Hearts boys. And, Bill, I think you're disgusted. You were at that game. You're disgusted with some of the Hearts diving tactics, should we say? Terrific win for Hearts, two brilliant goals on the counter-attack, all the great side of Hearts, the, you know, Gordon's goalkeeping, Paul Hartley's running in his goal. But I felt that in particular Rudy Scaccio, Andy, Andy always talks about using things to the limit, and you know, using as Barry Wilson showed for the penalty kick for Cali Thistle. Sure. Rudy Scaccio on Saturday crossed the line for me, and I think some of the Falkirk fans were disappointed not to have seen some of it on TV. Some of his antics were ridiculous, and he, and he was laughing at people when he got away with mm. diving. Bednar got one, got one of the Falkirk players booked, young Mark Twaddle, uh, for a, what I thought was a dive. And I just think Hearts, in some cases, crossed the line on Saturday. Andy? I, I wasn't at the game, Jim, but uh, so I don't know whether it was diving or not. You'd have to say that the referee, I think, is control of everything. I thought so the referee he had control of nothing on Saturday, Andy. Well, he obviously didn't think he was diving or else he would have taken action because referees have now been asked well, to stamp down. Well, does Kenny that. Clark not think it was an over-the-top challenge from McManus then? Mm -hmm. Referees make mistakes. I thought yeah. Alan Freeland, lo for 20 minutes in the second half, Alan Freeland was chasing after the game like a drunk man chasing a balloon. I think it's, I think it's, quite, I think it's quite dangerous just to target this uh, accusation of diving to foreign players. I think every team in the SPL have players who are capable of winning free kicks. Defenders, midfielders, attackers. And the classic example was Barry Wilson, who I thought played the game really well and asked the referee to make a big decision well, and he got a second penalty. Yeah, I'm not putting it on foreigners. I'm saying at that game on Saturday, I thought Rudy Scaccio in particular was over the score in his antics. He came off the field after 64 minutes sarcastically applauding the Falkirk fans who were on his case now. Who hadn't been abusing him. Who, Kiri who Kiriakos at Parkhead early in the season applauded sarcastically and got a second yellow and was sent off. Now, I thought Scatchel, I think scatchel has been fantastic this season. So hang on, but you get vicious and foul, foul abuse from supporters and you're not meant to react. Andy, I take vicious and foul abuse from supporters at every ground and I don't turn around and react to them. Because you can't, 
Right, let's, he's a professional. Let's show you Hart's winning goal. It came from Jankowskis, who I think has been accused of diving in his time as well, especially at Porto, Andy. Yeah, the, the, the winner had an element of luck about it. Um, but I must say, Hearts are, are capable of this. I think we've questioned their attitude in the, the, the later half of games. But they got a break here, and it's a vital one because it still gives them that six-point cushion over Rangers. I must mention the first goal. Scatchel was terrific in it. But if you saw the run from Paul Hartley, it was a 50-yard sure. sprint mm -hmm. from the middle of the park almost uh, to the goal line. That's a huge threat for Hibs this Twenty years ago this week, Hearts opened Tank Castle with a crowd of five and a half thousand watching the opening match which Hearts won 4-1 against Bolden Wanderers. Today, that fact is commemorated in the stands and in a souvenir programme, but which will be celebrated better by a victory today with a hard side which sees the return of Stephen Presley and Jose Goncalves, both of whom missed the game last Wednesday, and minus the end of Jan Kokas, they bring in Bruno Aguiar and Michael Pospisil. The Tramlin rarely fare well at Tyne Castle and have already conceded six goals to Hearts this season. They hold on to the same men who drew one each with Falkett last week, with the exception of Andy Todd, who comes back to the starting lineup. Well, about uh, an hour and a half ago, Tyne Castle was battered by an amazing hailstorm it has recovered, but the pitch is heavy in, in certain places, especially away down uh, Dunfermline's right wing at the moment. Chesnowski is trying to come through with that, and it's an early indication of what hearts and their attitude is for this game. Robbie Nielsen with a long one, and it is. Oh, Pospisil opens the scoring, ridiculous defending, but he was there and he took advantage of it, full advantage. Here's Hartley in a good position for Hearts. Big little ball inside and the Fairwell, three players could have gone for that. That is a very groggy looking defence at the moment there. It's a decent ball. Totally vulnerable in the air. And he wish he could uh, manage a smile for us. Uh, doesn't matter to them, they're happy enough. Good height in the air. Not the right kind of challenge on him. But definitely that. I'm not quite sure if he actually knew where that might end up. But he was trying for it. And Hearts are two goals up within the first 15 minutes of this game. Back the way. Oh, it's in again. Beautifully fired in there. Well, you could see as that came across, slipped all the way back. Nicolunas wriggled into a free position and then struck it home. Lethal play by the Lithuanian. Beautifully played inside, Bednar coming up. There's the run, they've got to watch this. He almost got that back. Nikolunas. Up comes Hartley. Hart's continuing to press, press, press. Fisas this time, good run by the fullback. Could be another one if he can get the shot and brilliantly saved. Can they do anything on the counter-attack? They've got a minute to do so. That's a stoppage time. Akani played it inside. Bacho. Decent save and the first of the afternoon for the Hearts goalkeeper of any note whatsoever. Right now putting it back. 
back. Good support by pieces. All played in again, and that was unconventional, but it worked. Aguilar will let fly. The slightest touch would have put that in. Better ball, that was a chance. A real chance there, Andrew Todd. Ought to have done better than that. I mean, if you're playing badly and you get from a set position like this an opportunity, then you should bury it. Well, Mark Bocho finding himself. Well, that's a beautiful run across there. That's a great save. And I think offside. Decent one in there, it's it! The substitute makes it 4 0. Yuho Makala. Once again, the Vermland, although they've had a decent period in the second half, found utterly exposed in central defence. Hart's coming away with it again. Now that is going to be a yellow card. And goes a red. It's a straight red. So Greg Ross goes off. For that tackle, Aguilar going down. He says, pick that up well. Julian drive this in by this leisure. Yeah, it was important to start though, you know, I think um, the firm were set up to kind of sit in and stifle the game for the first half hour and um, we were hoping to go at them and, and get the early goals that we did, so uh, the game went. Well, Archie's joined us here in the studio after being at Tynecastle on Saturday. Archie, both on Saturday and last week at Celtic Park, even in defeat, Hearts look in pretty good shape. Yeah, I think there are two very important things when you've got five games left, uh, it's a close title race or it's a close race for second place and that is you have mental and physical resilience. And Hearts have got that, as far as I'm concerned. And secondly, you've got a big squad. I mean, there was no Webster, there was no Jan Kaukas, um, and they could field players like uh, 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 Mikolunas, who's got a very good goal, who have been fringe players up till now, in a, in a kind of sense, uh, and bring on Aguilar in midfield. So they've got a, a very deep squad from which they can draw. And it means that they have injuries, you saw the Lovenkrans injury, they can supplement what they've got. And yet, uh, still be able to score goals. Now, I, d I mean, the first two goals were indicative of a very poor defence. Hearts players are in there to score the goals. There's no question at all about that. But look at that one again. Again, badly defended, but they took their chances. And that's what it's all about. This is the best of the goals. Uh, he comes up there and slots that away. So it shows you... And there is another big thing, Jim, and it's a, a psychological thing that is put away. And that is, Rangers have been over the course before in a situation like this, but playing for the title, yeah. not playing for second place. So psychologically, they may not have the edge that Hearts have. Hearts are in an unprecedented position. They've never been in a situation like this. We're on the verge of the Champions League. I just feel, I didn't see the Rangers game, I've only seen the highlights. I just feel they've got perhaps a bigger hunger yeah. Not sure. With just five games left now, the fight for the second Champions League place enters the final stages. And you wonder who will eventually come out on top. With a three-point lead and a superior goal difference, Hearts must be favourites. All season, they've been excellent going forward. They play at a very high tempo, especially at Tynecastle, and they use the full width of the pitch. Hartley's the inspiration. Rangers get their inspiration from the captain, Barry Ferguson. Here he is winning a ball in midfield, feeds Thomas Buffel, and Boyd takes up the perfect position to score. With Boyd through the middle, Purcell's strength and running power sees him back out on the left, a position he's totally comfortable with. Hutton on the right-hand side is another who can drive forward, taking the play right into the last third and committing defenders. But equally, Hart's fullback Fisas is also capable of getting up in support, 
the killer pass here comes from Hartley and when the cross comes over Fisas is in the box and Michaelinus almost scores Michaelinus has the pace with the ball at his feet to make things happen as well likewise Thomas Buffo he has the running power for Rangers to take things forward Defensively, in the last few weeks of the season, concentration is vital. Craig Gordon and Stephen Presley don't deal with a simple ball into the box. And at the back for Rangers, Kiriakos and Rodriguez leave things to each other. And thankfully for them, Vateris makes an easy save. If that one was easy, this one from the under-fire Dutchman earned all three points. So, will it be Tyne Castle for Champions League football next season? Or will Rangers have the strength of character to get back on the biggest stage of all? Well, it's one of the anomalies of this uh, split is that uh, teams play more home games and away games. Hearts have three home games, Rangers have two. Significant advantage? I think a lot of the things are loaded in Hearts' favour, Jim. You know, the, the fact that they, they are ahead, they have the goal difference, they have three home games, as you say. I, you know, it could maybe not go to that last game or it could go to that last game with just three points between them. But that's effectively, as we're saying, four points. And if it goes to that, I could see that being the scenario that Rangers are having to pull back goals as well as points. And I don't think they can, they pull, they can pull back the goal difference in the final game, to be honest. Archie, you and I know that bookies don't often get it wrong. They have Hearts odds-on favourite to finish second. Rangers even money. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've already pointed out it's uh, psychology now more than anything else. And I think they have that resilience. I know a lot of people thought that Hearts would collapse. I don't think they'll collapse. That doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to slip up. I think they might slip up. They've got very difficult away games, by the way. They've got uh, Hibs at Easter Road who are champing at the bit uh, for revenge after the semi-final. Gary Hay as well. His effort into the wall. Johnston lofts it back in. Onside, Stephen Naismith, and what a chance for the opening goal. The flag stayed down. He'd kept himself onside, despite the icy stares towards the assistant from the Hearts defenders. Naismith was on and should have done better. Aguiar, playing pretty impressively in the last few games for Hearts. No Julian Brellier. Here's Aguiar, right into the danger area. Jankowska saved by Combe. And what a miss by Bednar. An absolute sitter. Hearts with a chance to get themselves in front in the 10th minute. Fisas, Jan Kerskus with the speculative effort from 25 yards out on target, but it was never going to find its way past Alan Combe. You get the feeling Hearts are beginning to build up ahead of steam here. Good play from Aguirre. Fisas with time to deliver. Good ball in for Roman Bednar. And he goes close again. Lost by Gary Hay. Rudy Scatchel, not far away. Blistering drive from the Czech midfielder. And hearts have a problem here with Jose Goncalves. And stretching for that challenge. He looks to have done himself some damage. And with Presley and Webster missing, this could uh, create difficulties for the home team. Looking for support alongside, and it turns up in the shape of Bruno Aguiar. In for Hartley's head. Up goes Bednar! And he used his hands to put that in, and the goal doesn't count. And Fowler. Good header on from this. Danny Invincible's in, hits the deck. Well, it was right on the line. Invincible was convinced he was taken out. I don't think it was inside the penalty box, but Invincible was certainly looking for a free kick. Better gets it upfield to Scatchel. 
Rudy Scatchell is off and running. Free kick given against Greer. Could this be the moment? Paul Hartley. You know, it just could. The skipper scores in the 70th minute and Tank Castle goes wild. Greer's free kick, Amonic looking to hit back. Nish couldn't keep it. Hartley's Jankowski has a lazy layoff. Invincible. There's Nish. It's wide. A real opportunity for Nish to square the game. Greer into the penalty box. There's Simon Ford. What a save. Craig Gordon. How did he do that? Collected just about by Chesnauskas. Lovely pass. Reverse pass to Bruno Aguiar. Elliot waiting. Here's Scatcho. Roman Bednar. His fellow countrymen tried to divert that en route. He scored one, Paul Hartley. Can he create another one? He loves this sort of position. And very close to a second, Hartley. Shades of Hamden in the cup semi-final about that one. Aguiar's corner. Flicked off Naismith at the near post. Gary Hay couldn't control it. Chesneskis with the nutmeg on the Achilles skipper. And Christoph Berra. Nods in the goal which seals the points for Hearts. You know, this is a very hard game. This is from now and after splitting every game is very, very hard, very important. And I'm happy with performance. Uh, both, uh, both half, okay. Andy, uh, I don't know how confident you are about uh, giving us a decision on this, but uh, for the second week running, Kilmarnock feel aggrieved about a refereeing decision. Yeah, I thought it was a very tight one. I had heard uh, listening to the radio reports that it was an absolute stone waller. I'm not convinced it was a stone waller. It certainly wasn't inside the box, but of course the controversy comes because if he does see it as a foul, surely he does uh, send him off for a goal-scoring opportunity, but even then, he, he, his touch wasn't his touch wasn't sure. He wasn't running onto the ball in its natural path. So I think the referee got that right. Huge result for Hearts, though. It was at one stage. Rangers were winning one 0 at uh, Ibrox, and Hearts were doing nothing each. Within a minute, it changed. It's a massive result because uh, you know they now have to lose twice in the last four games. Hearts if they're to to lose that that lead to Rangers. But some big games coming up and Hibs. This weekend is going to be an absolute cracker and uh, they want to spoil Hearts' party. Well, let's have a look at the table as it stands between these two clubs, Hearts and Rangers, going into the last four games. Andy, the gap is five points, but the 14, the plus 14 goal difference in favour of Hearts really makes it six. Yeah, not, not a lot has changed in, in the fact that two games have to be given up by Hearts. Rangers have to really get uh, six points, a, a turnaround of that. This will be the pivotal weekend. Hibs Hearts on the Saturday, Celtic Rangers on the Sunday. I think if Hearts go to Easter Road and get the three points there, that should be enough. And Fraser, if Paul Hartley is in this kind of form when it comes to taking free kicks, it's always a bonus, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, time and time again, he's come up with the goods on the, on the, the big occasion and it was a, a terrific goal. And of course, he's coming in the back of his three goals against Hibs in the, in the semi-final. So he's obviously playing fantastically well. He's been a key player all season. Hearts play with the two main strikers. They are strong. They are target men. They need runners off them. Hartley gives that to, as a sketch. But uh, that's terrific technique and it just came at that vital time just when I think the Hearts fans were beginning to think it may not happen for them. And of course it's Berra who scores this, Andy. And if Kilmarnock had their way, he'd have been off earlier. Yeah, Kilmarnock had their chances. A uh, couple like this inside the six-yard box. But there's a difference. If you can just get it over that line, then it just eases all the tension. Archie, I know you're going to Easter Road this weekend. It's not clear-cut, is it? It would be even closer 
where Heb's able to field a strong team. I mean, I, I, I detract nothing from Hearts, but even in the semi-final, Hibs put out a team as soon as you saw the team selection they had to put out in that mm -hmm. semi-final, and you knew they couldn't do it. So consequently, it's going to be interesting to see who they can field. They played defensively against Celtic. I think they'll have to have that in mind against a strong, resurgent Hearts team. But notice that goal that Berra scored. That's the kind of goal with a team that's got this remorseless mm. urge to get something out of it. it. I mean, look at Rangers, for example, in that previous game. They missed chance after chance. Hearts, on the other hand, got a kind of scrappy goal there. And that's, uh, that's because they think they know they're going to make it. Andy, as Celtic will want to damage Rangers, though, Hibernian will want to damage Hearts. Well, this is Hibs' last chance. Uh, a good point for them at the weekend, but they need to get three points against Hearts, that'll be very difficult because as Archie was saying, all their, their bigger, their better players, uh, two or three of them will be missing. But it is an Edinburgh derby, they'll still be feeling hurt by that semi-final result and performance, so they've certainly got a chance at the weekend. Hearts in the press for all the wrong reasons this week, but attention back to football on Sunday. Good news for fans, Presley Bart, Scatchel Fisas and Jan Kausis all starting at the expense of Berra, McAlunas, Wallace and Elliot. Two changes for the visitors with Nakamura in for Petrov and Dublin starting ahead of Hartson. Referee Alan Freeland, commentary from Jock Brown with Mark Hately. It is the best defence in the league, Hearts against the best attack in the league, Celtic. Something has to give this afternoon. So it's uh, Aguar and uh, Jankowskis who get the game on the way and the opening exchanges will be very important in establishing the long-term part of the play. The set-piece taken by Nakamura. Aiming for Barga at the far post who won it well. Dublin has possession and there's the chance right at the start for Stevie McManus. There was no offside flag. What an opportunity for Celtic. This Fisas. Skatchel's flick on with a good one. Here's Jankowskis, fouled surely by Varga. The Slovakian on the Lithuanian, and Hearts have the free kick. Dion Dublin holding a high Celtic line in the box. And setting in this lead, Ibrahim Tal, centre back there beside Presley, finding Pisas. Bednar's pace might get him there. It did indeed. That's a free kick. Well now, Stanislav Varga living dangerously there. That's Hartley. from the referee you can take it if you want Varga Keane McManus all in there looking for the opportunity with Dublin awkward for Nielsen Bednar's clearance Skatchel looking there for Hartley getting that from Lennon Lennon's not a happy man at all as Hartley brushes him aside that's oh, great play by Skatchel could have been the third. Beating Boric at the near post. Well, he surprised the keeper, I think, with that one. Manis on his toes. Easily won this time by Jankowskis. Six foot four inches right the near post area. Came off Ibrahim Tal. Presley's there. Another chance. Another chance. Spun by Celtic. Roy Keane. Straight to Chesnowskis. Really an offside against Presley. Well, it's a great ball and what a chance for Jankowskis. Well, Tal and a fine cut through the first time in the match, losing out to Zdravski. Bad 
mistake by Tall. A fine block by Gordon. The ball's gone out for the corner kick, I think. It's the first mistake that Tall's made. But what a fantastic save from that young man there. Aguilar switching the play to Chesnoskis. Rangy running coming inside. Scatchel tackled strongly there by Lennon. A little bit of a clash afterwards. Lennon pushing him over. And again, turning to get into trouble again. There's trouble here for Neil Lennon. A yellow card for sheer folly in the part of Lennon. And a free kick's been given in a very dangerous position. This was just nonsense. Yeah. And Lennon turning back twice on Scatchel. I think Neil Lennon's insinuating that uh, the spitting. Scatchel winning that from Nakamura. Here's Pelfa. Celtic building up some attacking momentum here. Tal makes a good headed clearance. Hartley, obvious with a header. Maloney tries to read that. Aguilar did well to resist. This is Chesnowskis. Now Hartley. That's for Bednar. He's onside. Chance for the hard start. from Bednar starting right back from a Hartley header back to Aguilar back into Hartley super play from start to finish for that goal lighted in there by Telford as well won by Presley back it comes to Petrov fine save by Gordon he must have seen that late he steals it. Here's Petrov. Now Hartson. Petrov again. Baloney, a lovely play. Here's Petrov. That will not go for Celtic in front of goal, despite the efforts there. For still here, Petrov. Indeed, there's no more action to come. Hearts have won comprehensively by three goals to nil. For Valdas Ivanovskis and for the Romanovs, it's a perfect afternoon. The Champions League dream lives on. We must be favourites now for second place. Well, it's in their own hands. Um, if we win Wednesday night, then we'll, we'll finish second. But it's going to be a tough game on Wednesday. Aberdeen will come here full of confidence after a, a good performance yesterday. So it's important that we play the way we, we did today on Wednesday night. The people who come away with conspiracy theories have never played the game. Um, or, and if they haven't got conspiracy theories, they have no... No, no idea what principles and honour is. Yeah, I was there yesterday, Jim. I thought it was a terrific occasion again. Hearts against Celtic at Tynecastle. Wonderful atmosphere. And uh, Hearts thoroughly deserved their win. Uh, crucially, I think they picked their strongest 11, which I think is important. But they had far more energy, running power, and on the day, more skill and ability. Hugh, there was nothing sinister about it, but uh, McManus missing from close range early and then heading Hearts into the lead with an OG. It was the worst possible start because it gave the conspiracy theorists a real boost. But uh, for me, you know, McManus has done everything he can there. Reflex shot, reflex save from Craig Gordon. And then at the other end, the pace on the ball, sent in by Paul Hartley's terrific and McManus has the misfortune to misguide his header past uh, Artur Boric. So. And Aunt Archie, that was a fantastic free kick which the referee rightly allowed him to take. Yeah, and the goalkeeper has to be alert at all times. He was skipping away towards his right-hand post, couldn't get back uh, in time, obviously. Um, and it deserved uh, to stand. And I think Hearts played exactly the way they played in spasms throughout the season in different games with great surges. Andy, the FISAS red card on New Year's Day was later proved not to have been won. This yeah. goal they scored yesterday for the third one, TV replays, I think, showed he was offside. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it was very tight, but I think he was probably marginally offside. But uh, it could have had an effect in the game because it was 2 nothing. There was still a good 20, 25 minutes to go. So had Celtic got uh, a goal back, there might have been a few nerves, but I don't think anyone can deny the fact that Hearts were the far hungrier uh, of the two uh, teams yesterday and thoroughly deserved to win. And Hugh, there'll be odds on favourites, I would imagine, to beat Hibernian uh, on Wednesday, to beat Aberdeen, sorry, on Wednesday night. But of course, Hibernian playing Rangers on Tuesday. All eyes on that one. Well, if I was a betting man, Jim, I'd take Rangers to win at Easter Road and Hearts to win at Tynecastle against Aberdeen. It's the biggest game Hearts have played in 20 years. 
since a certain match at Dens Park on the final day of the league season in 1986. There's so much at stake for them. If they blow it at Tynecastle, they've only themselves to blame. OK, Archie, whatever happens on Tuesday, what happens on Wednesday? Well, I was there at the Dens Park when they blew it. So <laughs> the heart supporters greeting on, on the terracing and I felt for them and said so. And some people thought I was a heart supporter <laughs> as a result of that, that, that particular... Despite some bizarre team selections already this season, it couldn't have taken Hearts management team much time to decide on an unchanged side from Sunday's victory over Celtic. This, you might say, is a stronger selection with a still controversial figure of Rudy Scatchel aiming to score his first league goal since the 28th of January. Aberdeen coming with a late sudden now bring Richie Byrne into the side with Danny Dempsey left on the bench. Stevie Lovell, who scored a couple at the weekend to make his tally for the season 10, leads a side which is unbeaten in its last seven matches. Well, you know, some people have been assessing this game as perhaps the most important in Hearts history. I wouldn't go perhaps as far as that, but you wonder how players can cope in that kind of situation. Fertile, with all kinds of outcomes, triumph, or anti-climax, which has suffered before. This isn't just about football tonight, but about finding nerves of steel as hearts know full well. Aberdeen haven't come to Tancastle simply to be patsies, as that man knows only too well. Jenny Smith. And that played to bed, now he's onside. Where was the full back? And it just passed there. Jesnoskis came in, good breakaway there. But nearly that time. There's a chase for it. A lot of pace in that. But there was nobody coming through the middle. That is a problem. Well, there's a man who could make uh, Jose Mourinho look like the laughing cavalier. Nice little ball there, Presley kept his eye on it. That's ambitious and that's offside. McNaughton is up there, nicely touched down. Jimmy Smith, little touch in. Danny Nicholson couldn't get the shot in, but he was up there and he can really hit them. Hartley. Over there, and Langfield tries to get in and jump for a brilliant move there. Scatchel coming in on that blind run, and that's the nearest hearts have come to scoring. Now, this was a brilliant effort by Scatchel, a very difficult ball to take right to the goal line, and he had to hook it back. Most unfortunate, that could have been the opening goal. Deep, Scatchel. Let's fly, that's how dangerous he can be. That was out of absolutely nothing. Foster, Richie Byrne. There's a little flick with the head by Nicholson coming forward now. Barry Nicholson's very good at that. Hart's trying to keep up the pr uh, pressure, trying to keep the momentum going. That's a very good looking ball. Still just touched away. Great effort there by Langfield and Jakokas was in on top of it. He couldn't get the final touch. He's out there, and there's the hand, blatantly used. Penalty. Up he comes. That's it. Hearts look to be there, all right. The 
Kakus. Outside in. Well, that was a great save. Coming from uh, that far side. Nicolin is coming in, almost putting it in. Jumping there by Severin. Oh, that's very, very close indeed. The substitute that time, Nicolunas. Got right behind it there. There wasn't much of the goal to see, but it let fly. Thank you, Art. Stood there by Bednar. Got Severin going forward. And I think there's going to be a booking. Aguilar went down. Oh, he's red carded. The man who's been quite superb in the first half is red carded for this. Watch him going in. And he digs in both feet. That is a very bad foul. Skalskas as he came in. Craig Gordon is taking all the time in the world. I think he took about three minutes to get that ball. And there goes the final whistle. Hot. Well, pre-qualified for the Champions League and no wonder they're celebrating. It's almost like a cup win. Congratulations there to everybody in a very emotional Romano in the stand. And they're entitled to the celebrations. They've made it very difficult for themselves. The final score, that penalty, the only goal of the game. Hearts won, Aberdeen nil. Paul, just tell me how much pressure was on you to convert that penalty kick? An enormous amount of pressure, and um, you could feel the tension all round the ground. But I managed to keep my nerve, and as I've did all season, we hitting penalties, and that's probably the most crucial penalty I'll ever hit in, um, in my career. And this victory is for all players, for all club, for all staff, starting from I don't know from kitman to to bus, bus driver. You know, it's as big as day for Hearts. Well, you would expect Andy to be here, as is Archie. We also have Douglas Alexander from the Sunday Times. Archie, you said in commentary that uh, Aberdeen did not come to be patsies. They certainly didn't. No, they were great. I thought they played very well in the first half defensively. They did nothing up front, and that was their big weakness. I don't think the Hearts defence was really worried. Craig Gordon, you heard that uh, lovely lady, that uh, girlfriend of Andy, saying that Craig Gordon was a special. Um, but I think um, what, what uh, happened to Aberdeen, of course, was giving away that penalty. They folded after that. And then Scott Severin, who was superb, superb, uh, out of character, just lost the head. Terrible tackle. Off he had to go. So as a consequence, I, I think um, Aberdeen uh, are going to find it very difficult if, if anything is meaningful at all to get that fourth place. Well, Andy, uh, the Hearts fans have been having a go at you all season. Has yeah. it been justified? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I have criticised. Probably do agree with that. <laughs> I've criticised and praised an equal measure. I mm. think now is a time for a bit of praise, and I think none more so than the group of players because they've remained strong. I think Stephen Presley has shown great mm. leadership qualities in that dressing room because there's been so much nonsense happening off the park that I'm sure even he, in his private moments, wouldn't agree with. But for him to show that strength of leadership is a real credit to him. And, and for Paul Hartley, who not only this season has been outstanding, but in my view, maybe over the last 18 months, couple of years, he's been the best player in Scotland. Douglas, ultimately it came down to last night to get the points, which clinched second place, mm. but it's about the whole season, isn't it? Yeah, it's about the whole season, and there is, must be an element of criticism as well, as Andy said. You know, Hearts could have done better out of this season without the interruptions of the managers. There's no doubt about that. They start they had under George Burley. If George Burley had remained there, they would have been a lot closer to Celtic. So although this is a triumph for them, and don't get me wrong, it is a triumph, mm. 
there's also an element of they could have done better. They could have done better. Well, let's have a look at the goal which decided this game last night. It did, of course, come from a penalty kick. The referee clearly got it right, Andy. We've seen the replay uh, several times tonight. But what about the yellow card? Should it have been a red? Well, I think you can see there's a couple of Hearts players behind Russell Anderson who could have put it into the back of the net had he not raised his hand. So, mm. in my book, it's denying a clear and obvious goal-scoring opportunity. Big credit to Paul Hartley because that is huge pressure. He must have been dreaming what that would have meant had that ball hit the back of the net. But he still had to do it and he showed the great mental strength there. He said himself, Douglas, it was the most crucial penalty of his career. Mm. He just keeps getting better and better, Paul Hartley, doesn't he? I mean, he's mentally a strong player. He's aggressive from the first minute of every game you see him. Always trying to make something happen for his team. And as, as Andy said, guys like him, Stephen Presley, what I find sad about last night is another guy like Webster who's been amazingly consistent this season hasn't picked up a single booking as a centre half and is now missing the sort of moment of triumph because of the, the vendetta between him and Romanov. Archie, we can see Hart celebrating uh, this fantastic second place in the Bank of Scotland Premier League last night but next season of course they will face at least one qualifying round in the Champions League it really depends on the draw doesn't it? Well this is going to be a test for them having to cope on a twin track playing domestic football wishing to keep the momentum going there uh, to be a credible force domestically and yet succeed in Europe I think it's a big task for them mm -hmm. I don't want it to to sound pessimistic about it but uh, other teams have folded in these circumstances this is new for Hearts good luck to them congratulations to them and good luck to them in Europe but they face uh, horrendous tasks